Hey everybody, good morning. How's it going? Uh, right now I'm going to be doing my uh, conclusion of Metroid month discussing about Super Metroid. So right before I do that, I'm going to let everybody know that we are on the stream. So yes, uh, for those who are here pretty early in the morning or if it's the afternoon or in the evening, uh, whatever time frame this is, so just want to know how you guys are doing. Uh, please let me know through the chat. Let me just let everybody know that we're doing the live stream. Let everybody know on Twitter. Okay, there we go. Now let's do Facebook. Okay, there we go. So yeah, uh, that should be it. So please, uh, if you are here in the stream, please come by and say hi. Hey, everybody. Hi, good morning. We have Trooper B. Good morning. Good morning, Asaya. Uh, good morning, Joshua. Hey, what's up, guys? So yeah, we are finally going to be concluding uh, the live stream of Metroid with... Uh, Super Metroid. So yeah, I uh, decided to save this one for last because this is my favorite in the franchise. And it's also my favorite game of all time. So if you guys have any questions or comments about anything, please let me know. That'd be awesome. So yeah, um, again, if you have any issues with lag or with audio sounds like last time, in which I didn't know that the it was a microphone issue, so <laughs> I apologize for that one, uh, for those who were in the second part of um, Metroid Fusion. So for, for those who were there, I completely apologize. All right, so uh, you know what? Um, let's not, uh, let's not be, let's, let's not fool around. Let's, let's actually get into this. Hey, Jordan, good morning. So yeah, um, I just want to give off that this will be the last live stream gameplay that I'll be doing for a while. The next one I'll be doing is in November because there's a certain TV movie that's going to be coming out. And I'm going to be playing the movie, the first movie adaptation of it. So. Yay. But other than that, there will be, like, live stream Q&As. I will be doing that uh, in November and in December with a celebration of the last Old Metroid School Lane's 6th year, an uh, six year anniversary. I'm sorry. And Casual Chat's 5 year anniversary. Deep. So, yeah. Uh, I'm currently working on a couple of things. Like, I'm putting together some more information that I was able to write down for the... Uh, Secret Hey Arnold project that I'm currently working on, and also um, currently working on my next video, which is about the from pilot to final product on Wild and Crazy Kids. Which, oh man, I'm I'm really looking forward to that. Uh, yes, I have seen the trailer of Welcome to the Wayne. It looks pretty interesting. Uh, I even saw on Veronica Taylor's Instagram that she's actually going to be in the show, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, for those who may not know, Veronica Taylor was the original voice of Ash Ketchum from Pokemon. And uh, she's going to play like a character in the show and stuff like that. Something like that. I, I met her a few times over the years in um, Florida Supercon and... Paradise City Comic Con, yeah, I think maybe around that time, but yeah, it's awesome that she's actually going to be in the Nickelodeon show, so that's pretty cool. And yeah, the, the concept of Welcome to the Wayne looks interesting. I remember when we, when James and I first heard about it, we thought it was going to be like, something like Eloise or, um, you know, Sweet Like of Zack and Cody, in which it's going to be like people wandering around in like a building or something like that, but it sounds pretty interesting. I'm really looking forward to it. Again, you know, it's <clears throat> it lags sometimes. So, again, I completely apologize. So yeah, um, right now um, I've been in contact with a few people for 
the Secret Hey Arnold project. I have been working super, super hard on it. It's been taking me almost a year to work on this, but I can assure you that the wait will be super worth it. It's based off of a discussion that has never been said before about Hey Arnold, so seriously, I'm really, really looking forward to this. I put a lot of work into it. I've already gotten the first phase done. I'm currently working on the second phase, which is um, I have to look through all of my notes again, and I have to put it together into like the first draft of the script, and it has to be, um, you know, it has to be really authenticated. Like I really want this to be as authentic as possible. And then afterwards, I have um, I have a musician who's going to be helping me out with some music. I have some freelance artists who are going to be helping me out with some certain scenes. So yeah, I'm really working a whole. I've been working a lot on this particular project. I've I haven't put this much work in a project since I want to say since my as told my ginger video and um well not so much as my Disney Doug video. Disney Doug video just required me to watch the series all over again and at least as much as I can find. And um yeah, just watching the movie because I I asked you guys on Twitter on whether you wanted me to discuss about Disney um, Doug's first movie. All got, you know, pretty much all said yes, so I had to do more research on that, and that's how I was able to find out about the newspaper article discussing about that they predicted that Disney's Doug was going to do really successful compared to Rugrats, and they thought that it was going to make, the, the movie was going to make over 100 million dollars. I actually found that out when I was doing Explicit 2, Explicit 2, I actually found that article out, and I was saving it for a long time. Hey, Arun, good morning! Afternoon over there. Nice that you can join in. Uh, the stream keeps re buffering. Uh, sorry about that. Yeah, unfortunately, like, it, it does tend to slow down a bit. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm working on this with a laptop, and my laptop is a few years old, and it doesn't have, like, the latest up-to-date with, like, you know, for, like, a smooth live stream on video games, so, yeah, I'm very sorry if it's lagging or if it's buffering. I try to fix it the best way that I could. I, I put the resolution at its lowest that it doesn't look like complete garbage, and, uh, yeah, and also the frame rate is at... Not 60 frames per second as I would love it, but it's actually at 24. So, yeah, it sucks. But unfortunately, it's the only way I can be able to live stream it without it completely crashing. So, I mean, I, I mean, to be quite honest, um, you know, doing these live streams, it, it's not just for like, oh, I'm going to be doing a whole bunch of let's plays. It's like, it's for my opportunity to do something fun while talking to you guys. So... Yeah, uh, don't, don't worry, I will be doing some more live stream Q&As where it doesn't have to worry about, like, something on the screen. It'll just be me talking, so. I apologize for that, Joy. Hey, morning, Marlena. How's it going? Uh, the gameplay is too loud. Oh, okay, let me just lower that down. Sorry about that. Uh, let me just lower it down. Let's see. Hmm... Let's try here. All right, let me know if this is better. Okay, yes, I have heard about the new Metroid game that's been coming out. I heard about um, uh, Metroid Prime 4 and uh, Metroid Return of Samus. I have heard about those, and uh, I'm really excited. Super, super excited. And also, I'm really, really happy and really respectful that uh, Dr. M64 is not angry at the fact that um, Nintendo is planning on doing their own version of Metroid 2. And, um, you know, they basically had to shut him down. 
after his release of another Metroid 2 remake. So, you know, a, a lot of people can be bitter about that. I mean, I wouldn't have been surprised if Milton would have been bitter about it. Like, you know, him spending 10 years with little to no pay working on a passion project to remake Metroid 2 and then being completely shut down like days after it came out. So, you know, I really respect Milton for that. Um, yes, the volume's better. Okay, thank you so much for letting me know, Joshua. I have completely apologized for that. Okay, just wait a minute. There we go. Uh, don't make me on this topic, but... Um, I asked you what you thought Klasky Chupo's signature show. As in, like, a show that they're very infamous for? I would probably have to say Rugrats. I mean, when you think of Klasky Chupo, you immediately think of Rugrats. I mean, a lot of people may say, like, oh, you know, they were known for Duckman. They were known for animating the first season of The Simpsons. But if you want to know what really made them famous, it would have to be Rugrats. So, yeah, that's, that's my answer, uh, Jordan. Anyway, so uh, continuing with my thoughts on uh, E3. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited about Metroid Prime 4. It was hinted at for almost, I want to say, like, almost six months. Retro Studios posted something on their Twitter pages that they were working on something tasty, and they showed off Prime Ribs. And a lot of people thought, oh my god, they're going to make Metroid Prime 4. So, yeah, I kind of knew about that. And also the rumors of being two Metroid games coming out on E3. It, it wasn't too much of a surprise, but personally for me, I had no idea that they were going to do a Metroid 2 remake. That was a surprise for me. I thought it was going to be like, oh, they're finally going to do Metroid Dread. I mean, that's what I was thinking about, because Metroid Dread was something that I've heard about for the longest time, and I thought to myself, oh man, are they going to do Metroid Dread? But now it's not Metroid Dread. And unfortunately, it's not a continuation of Fusion, which I would have loved to have a continuation of Fusion, because seriously, Sam is destroying SR388, She's, the Galactic Federation is against her, but seriously, what's gonna happen next? She has the last remnants of the Metroid DNA, but, I mean, if it's similar to how, um, what you call it, with how the Alien franchise is, in which, like, the first four Alien movies were similar to the first four Metroid games. I guess, you know, there was never, like, a continuation of Alien Resurrection. Um, I guess they would have had to maybe do something like Prometheus or the newest Alien movie that came out. So, I guess I take that as, like, the Prime series? I don't know. But seriously, I really wanted to know more about what happened with, um, what, you know, after Metroid Fusion. Hi, Irving! Welcome aboard! Uh, Dead Time Stories. I have heard about Dead Time Stories. I have not seen it. Uh, I have been wanting to take a look into it, but I haven't had the chance to. into the Metroid franchise after mm, Metroid Other M. And as of right now, I have not played through Federation Force. I did hear some 
meh about it, but I'm not gonna just hate it for the sake of this isn't the Metroid game that we wanted, blah 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 blah, so I'm not gonna say anything about it. Although it has gotten like a lot of hate. Uh, the Cartoon Network short Lakewood Plaza, which was a, what it was originally called, and I thought it was pretty cool, kind of like an homage to like classic arcade video games and stuff like that, so I thought it was pretty cool. And uh, one of the people that I've interviewed on the podcast uh, many years ago, Chris Nielsen, he's actually going to be playing as various characters in the show, which is actually pretty cool. But yeah, I am interested in checking it out. What is my favorite board game? Uh, that's a good question. Uh, I like Clue. Um, I have um, Cranium. I love Cranium. I actually have a really nice deluxe set of Cranium in my room. Uh, not my room, my, um, the pantry in the living room. And I have I have Smart Ass, uh, or is it Dumbass? But it's one of those games in which you know you have like these questions, and you have this donkey as like the board, and you have to answer various questions. So you can be able to um, you know pass through the game. I have that. I have Scattergories. I have. Um, let's see what else I have. Oh yeah, I have apples to apples, but I pretty much um, am no longer playing that ever since I discovered Cards Against Humanity. But I do still have my copy of Apples to Apples. I have the original version and I have um, an extended version which has more cards. So, uh, yeah, uh, I have plenty of board games. Uh, my sister's favorite board game is Taboo. That's her favorite board game because, well, I mean, it's more like a card game. Because, you know, she loves the fact that, um, you know, you have to say, you know, the word that is given to you, but you can't say, like, the actual, um, what do you call it? You can't say the, you know, the words that are associated with it. You have to be really creative with your vocabulary, which is actually pretty cool. My favorite card game. Uh, let's see. Um... Okay, my favorite card game, um, let's see, I mean, if you're talking about, like, with, um, the standard 52 cards, um, not a lot, um, I, I don't really play poker, I don't know how to play Crazy 8s or anything like that, um, don't really play a lot of card games, the only card games that I do play, um, whenever that we have, uh, family over, we love playing, um, Dutch Blitz. Uh, that's a really fun game. I, I love playing Dutch Blitz. And occasionally if we have Uno, we'll also play that as well. I have Mexican Bingo that I got from when I was in New York. And that was a game that my grandmother... I, I, we're not even Mexican! We're actually... Ha I'm half Puerto Rican, half Dominican, but it's actually pretty crazy word of a game. We would, and whenever I would be in New York... The, the rare occasions in which we have the entire family over, we would just play Mexican bingo and we would bet money for it. It's like, you know, what if you got like, if you filled the entire card or if you get the corners or if you, you know, do the traditional lining up and, you know, uh, front, uh, not front, uh, horizontally, vertically, or diagonally. So yeah, there's that. And uh, Square, that's the, that's the game I was thinking about. Square is actually a really fun game. It basically is about, um, you know, you have teams of two, and you're trying to get, like, uh, four cards that are the same, like, you know, four kings, four queens, four jacks, or, you know, anything that's matching with four, and you have to let your uh, partner know that you have all four without the other team knowing about it, and you kind of have to make this, like, this gesture to let your partner know, like, 
you know, maybe he's like making a face or doing like a gesture or something, and then they have to yell out swear. And sometimes you can even fool your opponents and thinking about that, you know, that way they can lose a point. But if the opposing team guesses your gesture, they can say square and they'll take the point away from you. That's actually really fun. So yeah, it's, it's pretty simple, but it's a lot of fun. It, it gets really tense, especially since you're waiting for the, you know, the cards to come in. Uh, basically how it starts off is that you already have four cards. And the dealer drops off four cards into the table. And then, you know, you have to be kind of sneakily trying to pick out the cards. I mean, there always has to be four cards on the table. And you can try to see if, like, okay, this person got a four. That means that they're collecting fours. You know, always be on eye on it. And making sure that, um, you know, you kind of have into your mind, like, if your partner's collecting that or if the opposing team is collecting that. So it has a lot of strategy. So, yeah, it's a pretty fun game. What's up, AJ? How's it going? Uh, you seen Cars 3 yesterday, and it was pretty good. Awesome. I have not seen Cars 3. I haven't even seen any of the Cars movies, so... Yeah, um... I, I probably won't check on the movie until I've seen all two of them. So... Yeah, uh, that'll, that'll be a little fun. You still think Cars 2 is better? Ooh, that's... That's actually pretty interesting, because a lot of people say that Cars 2 was the worst, so... That's awesome! Or maybe Cars 3 was not as good as the other Cars movies. I don't know. That's actually pretty interesting, please. Let me know in the chat on, you know, your rank of the Cars movies. Uh, yes, Lakewood Plaza is getting a video game this year. I did hear about that. I actually saw from, I think it was Kari Walgren on her Twitter that she was posting up pictures of people testing the video game, so yeah, I did see that, and yeah, it's actually pretty- it, it, it makes a lot of sense, you know, you have a TV show that is based off of, like, homaging video games, so they're gonna have a video game based off of it. it, makes a lot of sense. Um, you're gonna talk about Cars 3 tomorrow? Awesome, Arun, can't wait for it. Yeah, that'll be a, that'll be really fun to talk about. Okay, Nasaya says, I tried Kablam for the first time. I never laughed so much of a show before. I loved it. Awesome, that's really great. Yeah, it's, it's really nice to hear that Kablam is getting a bit of a following. Um, especially since it was a show that, uh, for the most part, did have a bit of a following, but not so much when it came out, mostly due because it was overshadowed by a lot of Nicktoons that came out of around the same time, so yeah, it's nice to know that you like the play on this side. Uh, Cars 2 is the one Pixar movie that I refuse to watch. Okay, fair enough. Uh, like I said before, I've been hearing some negative things about Cars 2. You know, people like Doug Walker and just recently Jim and Ricky discussed about their thoughts on Cars 2, so that's fair enough. Okay, first boss. Well, second boss, if you count the other boss that was trying to present as a Chozo, but you know what I'm saying. Okay, Good Dinosaur was the worst Pixar movie. Yeah, I've been hearing a lot about that too. I've never seen it, but I did hear some mixed reviews on it, and I think it was like the worst um, that Pixar ever made financially. So it's a shame. Um, I, I mean, I like dinosaurs. I mean, I, I love The Land Before Time. So, you know, it's a shame that Pixar's take on dinosaurs wasn't as successful. I've only seen the first Cars movie, and I think that was the best. Okay, yeah, I, I've heard some, I've heard some discussions about it. Like it's supposed to be, you know, you have Lightning McQueen, and he destroys portions of a town, and he has to fix it. And he learns about his humble roots and about something like that. But yeah, I've heard about it, haven't uh, seen it, so yeah, oh, I missed. But yeah, um, I, I definitely want to see the movie. Maybe sometime down the line. I, I never had an interest of watching it because I've heard so many people talk bad about it. But, you know, um, I need to see it for myself. So I think that's probably what I'm going to be doing. I'll have to see the movie for myself. 
Uh, Kablam was awesome. Um, it had me as stitches. Well, Action League Now, yeah. I remember when Action League Now was like, you know, what many people consider to be like the best skit. In fact, that's the only one that had a spinoff series. And um, I've already discussed about in Nick Smissel about how they tried so many times to branch out um, Kablam, but it never went well. Um, if you want, I just released the newest episode of Nick Smissel 4 yesterday. Uh, where we were discussing about the Henry and June show, which would have been a spin-off series about Henry and June. So, yeah, if you're interested, go check out in the next Slimecast podcast YouTube channel. Okay, just a few more hits and it's dead, but I need missiles. is epic. Yes, it's one of my favorite soundtracks of all time. Uh, movie, TV show, video game, whatever. It's one of my all-time favorites. Um, I have to say that whenever I'm writing scripts for a video, I always listen to Metroid music, and Super Metroid is the one that I listen to the most. More recently, I have been listening to Metroid Prime, or the Metroid 2 Remake, so yeah. Okay, it's so yeah, I always listen to Metroid music whenever I'm writing scripts for videos. I, I think I even mentioned that before in a previous live stream or in a live stream Q&A or something. Okay, my favorite Kablam skit is Life with Luffy. Yeah, mine too. The reason why is because I always felt that that's what Pete and Pete would have been like if it was animated. I mean, think about it. You have Larry narrating about Loopy, which is very similar to how Big Pete would be narrating about Little Pete's adventures. You have crazy things going on that is really wacky and out of the ordinary, similar to Pete and Pete. So yeah, I definitely feel that Pete and Pete vibe in Life with, with Loopy, even though that Will and Robin Christmas Guardian didn't create Life with Loopy. It was somebody else who did. I don't remember the person's name. But, yeah, it's actually pretty cool. Uh, Dinosaur, uh, the Disney movie. Yes, I saw it I, I saw it once, like, a long time ago. I think I saw it when the VHS tape of Dinosaur came out. I remember when I first saw the trailer and just how mind-blown I was of it. It was such a cool trailer. It was, like, the most awesome trailer I have ever saw as a kid. Like, you know, the, the CG dinosaurs flying up into the, um, you know, the pterodactyl flying up into the air and all that stuff. It just was so cool. And then I did see the movie on VHS when it came out. I actually bought the VHS and I was kind of bored with it. Um, it, it just wasn't really that interesting to me. Uh, but then again, I, it's been a long time since I've seen the movie. So maybe the movie is good and maybe I just, maybe it was just an off day for me or something. But yeah, that was the last time, I, that was the first and last time I ever saw the dinosaur. I just thought it was pretty cool. I don't know, maybe, maybe because I've watched so much Land Before Time that I thought that maybe, you know, Disney's take on dinosaurs would have been so much better, but no, uh, I, I just remember it being is not that bad. I have never seen the movie, so please do not take my opinion of it. So, I don't know anything about the movies, Messiah, so don't quote on me. I just heard that it had mixed reviews from people. So, that's it. Hey, Cassandra, I'm doing okay, actually. Thank you for asking. You know, just hanging in there. Bit of a rough week at work, just kind of tiring. But other than that, I'm doing okay now. Father's Day is tomorrow. Really looking forward to that. Can't wait to spend some time with my dad. Especially since of everything that's been going on lately with him being sick. Um, I, probably, I think I want to get the spacer beam, so yeah, let me just, let me just get myself out first. Just save here just in case. 
I just want to get the spacer right. It'll definitely make things a lot easier for me. Uh, yes, I do agree, AJ. Toy Story is a great Pixar. I definitely do. Uh, I like Toy Story, but I prefer The Incredibles or Ratatouille. Yeah, both of those movies are also really good, I don't know. Um, I, it's funny when you say Ratatouille, because just recently, like, a few days ago, when E3 was showing off Super Mario Odyssey, the trailer, I saw somebody posting a scene of Ratatouille with the critic, and he's trying the Ratatouille for the first time, and it comes to him as a child eating the, the Ratatouille from his mom. Somebody put in uh, Super Mario Odyssey as, like, the Ratatouille that he's eating from the restaurant. Ah, oh, I missed! And, um, you know, it comes to him and, you know, him as a kid, and, you know, his mom is serving up the plate of Ratatouille, and, it's, and he's actually eating Super Mario 64. I just thought it was pretty cute. <laughs> But yeah, um, Ratatouille is a pretty good movie, and I also like The Incredibles as well. It just took, like, what, almost 12, 14 years for The Incredibles 2 to come out. Seriously. I need health, or I'm gonna die. Give me, give me health. Ah, much better. save here. Up is the saddest Pixar movie. Um, I can see that, yeah, because you have that scene with Carl and Ellie, and it just makes you sad. Seeing their life together, playing in complete silence. Oh, it's such a perfect so I can't really say anything about it. Thoughts on Princess and the Frog? Love that movie! Oh my god, I love that movie so much. Although, you know, a lot of people just say, eh, it's like, it's whatever, but I seriously love that movie. Tiana's like my second favorite Disney princess. She's amazing. And I really like the songs, and I love the villain. It's such an awesome movie. It's a shame that it doesn't get as much appreciation compared to, like, all the others. It, it, you know, it's kind of like when I um, was doing the Disney podcast with um, Chris about the Disney Renaissance and about, like, which was the one that started the Renaissance, Little Mermaid or Roger Rabbit? Now people are going to be just debating about which really started the Disney revival. Was it Princess and the Frog or Tang? So, yeah, it, it's, it's crazy. But yeah, I do like the movie a lot. And I, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Tangled, I love Frozen, I really like, um, what else I saw? Um, I saw Wreck-It Ralph, love that movie. Saw Zootopia, love that movie. Uh, the only one I have not seen in theaters is Moana. So I have not seen Moana, so I, I really want to see that movie. So I, I want to see how that fares out. I saw, and it's funny because I saw Frozen in theaters, I saw Zootopia in theaters, I saw Inside Out in theaters, I saw Wreck-It Ralph in theaters, but I have not seen Moana. So yeah, I need to really see that movie for myself. But I've been hearing a lot of good things about it. Let's see, uh, Joshua says, I did find Dinosaur to be boring after the first part after rewatching it, so I don't think you're missing out on rewatching it. Okay, fair enough. So, yeah, if I'm not missing out, then good. I don't have to rewatch it again for some reason. Probably maybe for a Disney podcast if I ever want to do that again, but... Yeah, I'm not planning on it right away. I mean, I already did one with Chris, so... I mean, if I want to do a Disney podcast again, then... Yeah, it'll have to be for something different. Although I am planning on doing something Disney-related again. I'm doing another Disney podcast, but can't say anything about that. Hush, hush. But trust me, it's going to be awesome. I'm planning on doing something really special uh, around uh, August. So I'm not going to say anything other than that. Thanksgiving. The Pixar theory is weird. Um, are you referring 
referring to like that the Pixar theory is like they're all connected in the same universe. I don't think it's weird. I think it's actually a really interesting callback. You know, like how there's some characters that are in some Pixar movies that's going to be referenced later on. I think it's a pretty cool thing. Um, you know, it, it definitely gives like throwbacks and callbacks to like you know um, the scene in which you have like in Finding Nemo you see the Buzz Lightyear toy, or in Monsters Inc you see that um, there's a clownfish, and later on there's going to be you know Finding Nemo coming out. So I actually like those little things. Okay, take a look at this right here. When we see this tiny crate, it's in the original Metroid. That's actually the size of the original crate when you're know, looking at Samus. It's actually kind of crazy when looking back on it. Definitely a lot more of an intimidating place as opposed to like the, um, you know, the, the, from the original Metroid. But you, if you take a look at this, this is, um, a, this right here is a Galactic Federation soldier and he's dead. Or is that a space pirate? Wh whatever it is, it's pretty creepy knowing that he didn't even get close to fighting off prey. Alright, I'm just gonna save right here just in case anything happens. You'll love Moana, it's quite different for a Disney princess movie. That's great! I love things that are different. So yeah, um, if it's different, then I'm really looking forward to it. Moana has good music. Well, I can expect it has good music. I mean, done by Lynn manuel Miranda, aka the one responsible for the biggest freaking Broadway musical on New York right now, uh, Hamilton. Getting tickets for it is almost impossible nowadays. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to it. Come on, open your mouth, say ah. There you go. Watching too much contemporary Nick. Uh oh, that's not good. Try watching some liberal cartoon network. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. What I'm about. Uh, why are the Disney movies so good while their channel is bad? I think different management. I think it's different management. Uh, did you know that Tara Strong has vines on YouTube? Makes a lot of sense because. Where else are you going to put vines nowadays, ever since the website shut down? They have been uploaded on YouTube, pretty much. But does Tara Strong have a, web, uh, a YouTube channel where she uploads her vines, or is this from somebody else? I have a really strong feeling it's from somebody else. Okay, I have seen Moana. It has a powerful message. Okay, cool. Like I said, I haven't seen the movie, so I'll definitely have to check it out for myself. Have I seen Chadtronic yet? Uh, no, I have not. The only thing I know about Chadtronic is that, um, 
he was actually the original performer for The Lobster in The Amanda Show, but I don't know anything about his work, so I'm sorry. Have I ever seen Napoleon Dynamite? Yes, I have. I remember when that movie first came out, everybody was talking about it, and I saw the movie for myself, and I was like, this is actually a really interesting movie. This is like when indie movies were starting to become a lot more popular, like with The Sunshine and My Big Fat Greek Wedding and all that stuff. So yeah, I have seen the movie, and it's actually the only thing from Jared Hess that I thought it was actually pretty cool, because I already talked about how much I don't like Nacho Libre. So yeah, I mean, I thought it was a pretty interesting movie. Uh, I haven't seen it in a while, although I did meet um, uh, the guy who played as Pedro. I did meet him in, uh, I think it was MegaCon or J-Con. Yeah, I think it might have been J-Con. It was a convention in Tampa. I met him many, many, many years ago. So yeah, he was a pretty cool guy. It's just the Vine camera. Okay, so is it a new website or is it like a camera that is that is from Vine? I, I, again, I don't really know these things. I don't really post things like Vine. I mean, I rarely use Instagram. The only reason why I use it is to show pictures off on my newest trips to whatever convention I go to or any cool event that I go to. So yeah, I rarely use like social media. The only time in which I do is to like update you guys on what I'm up to or if I find anything really cool. Yeah, not much of a social media person, to be quite honest. I mean, I rarely even use my personal Facebook page. Uh, let's see. Did I see Captain Underpants yet? No, I have not. But it looks really cool. I remember the books. The, they were really popular when I was a kid. I've never read any of the books, to be fair. But I have heard that it was really popular for well, around my time, but I've never seen it. You know, I've never seen it, so... Really want to have a chance to watch it for myself. Uh, Rise of the Guardian. I haven't seen that movie. I really want to because, um... I was planning on doing, um... Yeah, I'm still planning on Heroic Jim or Jug. Uh, but for some reason, when I tried to write the script for Wolverine and the X-Men, nothing came out. So I put it on the side until I can think of something. I mean, I'm still working on Heroic Gem or Junk, don't get me wrong, but I don't know. For some reason, whenever I try to do it, it just, it never comes natural to me. Probably, be, I mean, it's not because it's com something completely different. You know, I mean, it's about, like, obscure or overlooked superhero programs or movies, but I don't know. Just, I mean, maybe for Wolverine and the X-Men in particular, maybe, I mean, maybe it's some, I don't know, I don't know what, I just, it just hasn't clicked on the list yet. I, I'm, but I am, I, I did actually did put that on the list of, like, obscure or slightly forgotten superhero movies of Rise of the Guardians, because I want to see that movie for myself. Uh, my pal Morty from Manic Expression did a review on it in his channel, if you're interested in checking that out. Alright, let's see if this works. <clears throat> yes, um, I did hear about Welcome to the Wayne, and it's awesome that it has a release date. That's pretty cool. I'll definitely have to check it out for myself when I have the chance. That's better? Fantastic. Um... 
they released a trailer on their YouTube channel. Did you see it? I have seen it, and I also saw pictures of it. So, I'm yeah, it looks pretty cool. I also know that Veronica Taylor, uh, the, vo the original voice of Ash Ketchum, is going to be in the show. So that's re actually pretty cool. I found that out on her Instagram. <clears throat> yeah, I think she posted it on both Twitter and Instagram that she was going to be on the show. So that's awesome. Really looking forward to it. Uh, there's a shipping name for Elsa from Frozen and Jack Frost from Rise of the Guardians. Really? I mean, like I said before, I don't really care too much about shipping. I mean, unless it's something, you know, like that makes, I, I guess it, unless it's something that makes sense, then I would be okay with it. And something like Elsa and Jack, because they have ice powers, I guess that kind of makes sense. That's pretty cool. But yeah, I, um, but that's, that's actually pretty cool that, you know, they have a shipping together. I mean, you know, if, if, if for the fans anyway. But yeah, I don't really care too much about that kind of stuff. But it's nice to know that some people do. And that's, that's, that's admirable. Uh, your session with the Friday Night Nicktoons podcast was very good. I'll have to disagree with you about not being a good TV movie. I tend to like it. Well, if you like it, then that's perfectly fine, Jordan. I don't hold that against you. I personally don't like it. But if you like it, then that's perfectly fine. I have no judgment whatsoever. <laughs> Let's see. Mm, Welcome to the Wayne was created by Billy Lopez. He worked on Phineas and Ferb and the Wonder Pets. The Wonder Pets, huh? Um, that's that preschool show from Nick Jr., right? About the animals and stuff. So, okay, that's interesting. Uh, he provides the voice of Ollie on the show. Okay, that's pretty cool. He's going to be voicing one of the main characters. That's awesome. Auntie will be performed by Alana Ubeck, who's Manny Rivera on El Tigre. Wow, that's actually pretty cool. Nice that she gets to have another role again. Oh, I mean, one for Nickelodeon anyway. So yeah, um, let me just ref let me just bring my health back a little bit. Okay, Billy Lopez is the brother of the guy who did uh, the songs for Frozen. Oh, really? That's, really? that's actually pretty cool. I actually have, um, not only is, you know, he also did the songs for Frozen, but he also did the songs for Avenue Q, which, um, let me just uh, turn right over here, if you can see it. The poster of Avenue Q is up on my wall, because I went to, uh, went to a production of it a few years ago, and uh, it was awesome, by the way. Oh, uh, camera's not working for some reason. Hold on. Okay, there we go. For some reason, the camera just turned off. Uh, why did Veronica Taylor stop voicing Ash? It wasn't the fact that she stopped voicing Ash. It's because the anime of Pokemon was purchased by the Pokemon company as opposed to four kids. So that's why um, Veronica Taylor and pretty much a lot of the voice actors were replaced. It wasn't been done by four kids anymore. It was done by the Pokemon company. So it wasn't the fact that she stopped doing it. It was just the fact that, you know, um, the rights to the Pokemon anime in America was shifted. So that's why uh, Veronica is not the voice of Ash anymore. Instead, it's uh, Sarah Nanosheni, whom now is voice Ash longer than Veronica. That's crazy to me. That's just insane. But trust me, she loves voicing Ash. And if she had another opportunity to voice the, the character, she would do it in a heartbeat. Trust me, I mean, I've met with her twice in conventions, and I've seen her whenever she meets up with, like, people who are fans of the show and how much they loved her performance. So, trust me, she still has a love for the character. Right now, as of, um... I think it was like a few months ago, there's a petition going around that they want Veronica Taylor to reprise her role as Ash in the new Pokemon movie because it's basically a retelling of the very first episode of when Ash first got Pikachu in honor of the of Pokemon's 20th anniversary, which is actually pretty cool. I love to see uh, you know, a new take on it. Maybe extend the story a little bit. 
the one thing that I really want to see extended is, uh, you know, Ho-Oh, when, um, you know, it shows up to Ash. It's like, yeah, I, I want to know more about that, to be quite honest. Oh, I missed. I hate when I miss like that. Uh, I meant to ask you this last live stream, but I forgot. Did you hear The Secret World of Alex Mack is getting a full DVD release? Yes, I think I did answer that question, Pocketbook. But, uh, yeah, I did hear about that, and it's finally a about time that it did. Because the only way you were able to see, um, you know, Alex Mack was on, obviously, with bootleg VHS uh, recordings of the show. And the only time in which Alex Mack was released in... Um, on DVD was the first season, and the only reason why was because it had um, Jessica Alba in the front cover, even though she only appeared in a handful of episodes. But the only reason why she was there was because the Fantastic Four movies were becoming popular. So it's nice that they're actually getting a full release on DVD. Ah! Oh, why did I do that? That was stupid of me. But yeah, I mean, it's nice that um, a lot of the live-action shows on Nickelodeon are getting releases on DVD. We already have My Brother and Me, Mystery Files of Shelby Woo's out on DVD, and now Alex Mack. I, I, I mean, now, the next thing we need now is Space K- Oh, you know what? Forget it. I'm not gonna bother with it. But actually, I do need to go into the other side of that room because I need to get something from there. But yeah, um, now the only thing we need to wait for is... Um, Let's see. We need to wait for space cases. And we need to wait for 100 Deeds for Eddie McDowd. And Cousin Skeeter, even though I don't want it. But hey, it'll be nice to actually have decent quality of the DVD. And Animorphs, even though I know that Animorphs has been released a lot on Canadian television. But a nice DVD case would be nice. And the complete series of Clarissa would be awesome. Instead of just releasing it by volumes. And please release season 3 of Pete and Pete. I'm... I'm begging Paramount to do that. Or Shaw Factory, or who- Ah! Oh, whoever. I just want that. I want that so bad. Uh, yeah, Netsy Classified and Dragon- uh, Yeah, I was, I was just referring to the 90s live-action shows, not the 2000s. But yeah, those, those shows too. I mean, I can understand them not releasing all that, or um, the Amanda show, because maybe it's due to copyright claims with the music. But, you know, doing what the Splat did in which just cut off the music performances and just focus on the skits, and that's pretty much it. I guess that's pretty... Maybe, you know, even with Wienerville, you know, you could just release, um... You know, I mean, instead of having the cartoons that they used to show on Wienerville, just replace it with the Nicktoons. Just like that one time in which they did air Wienerville and they replaced it with Rugrats cartoons. So, having that, that'd be a great way to actually release the series on DVD. But I know it's not going to happen. The, the, the demand for it is not high enough. Uh, but you know what? I mean, it's just the cynical part of me. Alright, there we go. Uh, let's see. Sega or Nintendo? I love both. I love both for different reasons. Um... Uh, my cousin had the Super Nintendo, and I used to go over to his house every day after school, and we would play off various video games. And, um, you know, he had, like, Mortal Kombat 2, he had Al Aladdin on SNES, he had, um, he had Super Metroid, which was my uncle's favorite game to play. He had Street Fighter 2, and Legend of Zelda Link to the Past, so I love that. And later on, I received, um, a hand-me-down Sega Genesis from my other cousin. And I had uh, the Sonic games, I had Golden Axe, I had the Ooze, I had Comic Zone, I had Vector Man. So yeah, I love both of them. I've never owned a Dreamcast because I switched over to PlayStation. And, you know, I, that's why I don't have fond memories of the N Nintendo 64 like a lot of people do. So, yeah. Um, so I, I have to say both for different reasons. Because, that, I mean, those were the er that was the era that I grew up with. The 8-bit and 16-bit era. I think that's it. So, yeah, um... Yeah, I have to say both. You know, I, I love Sar Sonic as much as I love Mario. 
Which, you know, I'm excited about Super Mario Odyssey. Oh my god, that trailer! Have you seen that trailer? It is amazing. If you've not seen it, then go watch the trailer now. Oh my god, it's so amazing. I love that trailer so much. And Sonic Mania. Oh man, I'm so excited. Tom and I are actually going to be doing a follow-up podcast when Sonic Mania comes out. So yeah, uh, I'm really excited about both games. I have to go to my friend's birthday party right now. Well, thank you so much, Cassandra, for joining on the stream. Really do appreciate it. Have I known about the Cartoon Network video slash computer games? No. Never played them. Yes, I do agree with Codebox32. The Mario Odyssey trailer was amazing. It was so cool. Just seeing the reactions of the Easy Allies crew when they first saw the trailer and just me seeing it. Oh, it was so great. Oh, it made me so happy. <laughs> uh. I'm sorry, but seriously, if you have not seen the trailer, please go watch it. It is so good. Uh, Alright, I'm done. <clears throat> yes, and they did bring Pauline back, I know. <laughs> it's like what Kyle Bossman said at the end when Pauline was shown. It's like, oh my god, is that Pauline? She's canon! <laughs> Yes, Kyle, she is canon. <laughs> yes, I did see the sneak peek of Rocco's Modern Life TV movie. Um, I saw it on Twitter, like, you know, the postings of the pictures that Carlos Alice Rocky shared. So, as for, like, news, I have not seen anything yet. But I will definitely check out more of it really soon. Let me just save here really quick. There we go. Let's see, Pauline got a main Mario game before Daisy and Waluigi. Yeah. Yeah, she did. Yeah, because Pauline was in, like, the original Donkey Kong games, uh, you know, with the ones that Mario had to save her from Donkey Kong. And, um, I think she was in other games as well, but, um, again, I have, um... Oh, that's right, I need to get the Ice Beam here. Oh, that's- no, okay, yeah, I have to get the Ice Beam up there. Okay, yeah, let me just bomb this down. There we go. Who is my favorite Sonic and Mario character? Mmm, that's actually a really good question. I've always loved Sonic as a kid, so I'll probably say that. Uh, Tails is cute. I, I, he's, uh, he's cute and he's a, he's a genius. And, I, and Knuckles is pretty cool. Um, let's see if I think of anything else. Uh, can't think of it. Uh, I think those are like my favorite characters. As for Mario characters, um, let's see. I, I mean, I do like Mario and Luigi. They're fun characters. Um, I have to say that uh, you know between the princesses that Mario had to save, like between um, you know Peach and Daisy and all that stuff. My favorite is Rosalina from the Galaxy games because she actually has a really cool backstory. And, you know, she has a, a lot more development than you can say for any other Mario character. So, I like her. I, I, I really like Ro Rosalina. She's one of my favorite characters. Okay, let's see. Interesting to note about how some of the Rocco crew went on to work on Spongebob. And I've been watching the shows and how they morph into one another. Yeah, I guess so, because you can definitely tell that um, with, um, you know, the, the, there's a lot of similarities between, like, Rocco and Spongebob.
It's actually pretty uncanny to look back on it, to be quite honest. But as for like, um, you know, uh, I mean, there's there's definitely its differences, obviously, because it's trying to be its own thing. But yeah, it's definitely really different. Oh yeah, and now, now I remember what I have to do. Let's see, are you gonna try to watch Are You Afraid of the Dark in Halloween? Any advice for a first time watcher? Um, okay, uh, oh, you're gonna watch it, okay. Uh, let's see, my advice is, um, be aware that a lot of the acting and the effects are pretty dated, but, there are some episodes that are really, really cool, and they actually do have this kind of creepy atmosphere to them. But just be aware that this is 1991, and that the acting and the effects are horribly outdated by today's standards. But you have to, yeah, you have to put it into that perspective. But other than that, um, yeah, I mean, if you have, if you're wondering about like episodes that I recommend you check out. Um, I did a list of my top 10 favorite episodes of Are You Afraid of the Dark many years ago on my Old School Lame blog. So if you want to go check that out, you can to see what episodes to watch. But on the top of my head, like, w episodes to watch, Tale of the Super Specs, Tale of Laughing in the Dark, um, let's see, a Tale of the Dream Girl, uh, Tale of the Dangerous Soup, uh, Tale of the Silver Side, that's my personal favorite episode from the uh, Revival era. Uh, let's see. I need to get the uh, Power Bomb next, so... Uh, let's see. No, it's... I think I... Oh, yeah. I, that's right. I do need to go back. Yeah. Yeah, those are the ones that I, that are on the top of my head. But definitely go check out uh, my list if you're interested. And who knows, maybe some people from the chat will let you know about their favorites. It'll probably be a while until some of the more obscure 90s live-action shows will get DVDs because they're not as remembered. Definitely, I do agree. It'll be a long time. I mean, you know, even Clarissa doesn't have a complete series on DVD. I mean, they just have the volumes. And, you know, Clarissa is one of the most well-known. Uh, but still, I mean, yeah, you do have a point. I mean, it's gonna be a while until anything like that will be released on DVD proper, like... I mean, I would love to see it happen, but I know it's not going to happen for a while. I mean, I doubt that we'll ever get Caitlyn's Way on DVD. I severely doubt that. Considering that Caitlyn's Way was so obscure that pretty much everybody just don't seem to remember what it is. I mean, you know, not a lot of people have even heard of it, let alone seen it. But I would love to see more shows on DVD that are released. I mean, you know, Shout Factory and those kind of stuff, they release obscure stuff all the time. So, you know, why not at this point? My friend is turning 19 today. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, tell him happy birthday for me. Do I ever plan on doing a review on the newer Fairly Odd Parent seasons? Not for a while. I mean, yeah, not for a long time. So yeah, sorry. Uh, let's see. I think Tom Lynch is kind of an underrated creator for Nick. He created six shows for Nick and executive produced at least two more. He barely gets any attention compared to Dan Schneider. Yeah, it's true. But then again, you know, similar to, you know, Schneider, Tom Lynch does have his misses. But yeah, he definitely needs to get at least a little bit more recognized.
It's raining hard here in New York. Oh, that's too bad. That's really too bad. Wish you the best of luck on the rain. Yeah, it was raining here a few days ago. But, um, yeah. Sorry to hear about the rain. Interesting thing to note is that I saw Lindsay Felton as one of the Splat promos. as her, Not as Caitlyn, but as a regular girl. Really? Really? You have Lindsay Felton, who was in Caitlyn's way, yet you're not going to promote her as Caitlyn, but just some regular one-off person? That's actually kind of sad. It's like, you know, if Lindsay Felton hadn't been on any Nickelodeon projects, and then she's called in to help with the Splat promotion, it's like... Hey, you know, um, we want you to be in a promo for the Splat. It's like, oh, you're gonna help promo for Caitlyn's way? No, you're just gonna be a, some regular one-off bystander. It's like, man, that sucked. Uh, I guess that pretty much says to me that we're not getting anything from Caitlyn's way anytime soon, or even at all. Anyway, are you ever going to do a podcast retrospective and going to Dan Schneider's shows? If I am, I have to invite John, uh, a.k.a. Uh, Rugrat for entertainment's sake. I'll definitely have to invite him over for that. Maybe I will at some point, you know, as soon as he's, you know, Dan Schneider is, you know, um, done with any shows for Nickelodeon, which pff, I doubt. But I, I mean, like, in the sense of which, you know, as soon as I have, like, a, a, a cutoff point in which I want to cover, like, Dan Schneider programs, then I'll definitely call John and Douglas into the podcast. Have I seen stuff with Scalfly? Scalfly, never heard of him. N never heard of Scalfly, sorry. Oh, uh, let's see. Though I haven't seen them, Tom Lynch's shows all seem interesting. Caitlin Sway and Alex Mack seem to be interesting shows based off of their premises. I'll have to check them out. If you are going to check them out, I, I mean, I've even said this to somebody who was interested in watching Alex Mack, but... I have to warn you that the first two seasons are going to be really slow, even to the point at which they're almost pointless. Because, you know, after a while, it, I mean, you know, with, you know, uh, Alex Mack tries to definitely lean more of trying to be like Clarissa. Season three and four are the ones that really make it for me. So, at least that's my thoughts. And Make It Pop and The Other Kingdom were both hated by everyone. But to be fair, he didn't create create those shows, he just adapted them. Those shows were from already other source materials. You know, there was like, I think it was like a show from Latin America or something. So he just did the ad adaptation. He didn't do like the actual creation of the premise itself. So, yeah, it was more like he adapted them. He didn't exactly create them. But yeah, I did hear some, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of negative things I, about that, those two shows, which, you know, I wish that Lynch would create something different and original. We'd love to see him do a new take on a show. So yeah, um... Yeah, anyway, so discussing about that, um, yeah, yeah, I really wish that Lynch would, you know, do another pro project because I would love to see him do a different take on it. I mean, it's a shame that he hasn't done anything like that in a while, but, eh, you know, it's not too much to be expected, considering that he's been focusing on doing, like, executive producing stuff, which is fine, but I would love to see him do something else.
Favorite role by Chris Summer. Oh man, there's so many. Ah, oh, I mean, let's see. There's Penny from Inspector Gadget. There's Elmira from Tiny Toons. There's um, let's see what else. Uh, there's Number Five from Codename Kids Next Door. There's oh my God, there's so many of them. Seriously, she's amazing. She's an amazing voice actress, and you know her is Miranda from As Told by Ginger. So evil and conniving. It's awesome. But yeah, um, I, I love Cree Summer. She's awesome. Uh, Alright, have a good one, Irving. Thank you for joining on the live stream. Stuff with Scalfly is one of those annoying clickbait channels. Aw, that's a shame. Yeah, I'm not really a big fan of those clickbait channels because it's always like, you know, if you like this, then go click on this to watch it. It's like, Dude, that's sad, you know? Well, if that's the case, then, you know, if that's if that's one of those, like, clickbait channels, it's like, watch Mojo, then that's kind of sad. Oh, well. It's not clickbait, he's a cool guy. Okay, then, which is it? Is it clickbait, or is he a cool guy? I, I mean, personally, I really don't know. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know what, you know, I don't know anything about this guy. So, yeah, I mean, just, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm sorry. So, if, if if you guys have your own different opinions on him, you know, I don't know. I don't, so, yeah, you'll have to let me know about that kind of stuff. Uh, don't forget Susie from Rugrats. Oh, yeah, that's right. And also Susie from Rugrats. Although, you know, uh, with Rugrats, I mean... You know, sure, she was, yeah, she, um, I, I mean, I, I don't, that's not, like, one of the major roles that I associate her with, but, yeah, I, I do also like her from Regrets as well. J okay, Tom Lynch was an executive producer on The Troop and Bucket and Skinner, and possibly a few more. Yeah, I mean, definitely, because, yeah, around that, that time he was mostly doing executive producing stuff. Yes, I did hear about the Pete and Pete marathon. I've been messaged about that like crazy. So yes, I do know about it. Don't worry, I will check on it really soon. Don't you worry. But yeah, I'm really excited because um, it's nice to know that, uh, you know, Pete and Pete is finally going to be released on the splat that doesn't involve with, like, a whole bunch of shorts. I mean, yeah, there's going to be a few shorts in there. And also, you know, there's going to be, like, you know, episodes from the pilot season. But hey, you know, it's definitely a bigger improvement than what we got, you know, as opposed to, like, the, what the 90s or all that did. So yeah, really excited. Oh, uh, will Cree Summer be on Where In Between? As of right now, no. I did message her on Twitter, and she has not said anything. I gave her the old schooling uh, email address, heard nothing. But then again, she's busy. What do you, I, I mean, it, it, I, it's not for me to expect that she's going to respond to me right away. She's a real, she's a prominent voice actress who's, you know, does a whole bunch of roles. She's a wife and mom, so I'm not going to expect anything anytime soon. But, I mean, if she ever does show up on Where In Between, trust me, you guys will be the first to know. Anyway, I think I got all the um, equipment that I need. I wasn't able to find anything, so I'm going to get out of here. I feel that Grey Griffin and Tara Strong have the same number of their roles. Maybe. I don't know. I mean, you hear them in everything nowadays. It's crazy. But yeah, both I've met both Grey and Tara in conventions. They're super nice. Um, I, I even told this story many times over, but man, that time that I met <laughs> Tara Strong, and I was waiting in line to meet up with them, and there was just a whole bunch of people waiting in line, like the, there was this guy who had a guitar, and he was, and he had long hair, and he was talking to like a whole bunch of like cruel jokes that he wanted to play on people, and then when he met up with Tara Strong, and you know, at first she was doing her, uh, Twilight Prince, no wait, not, not pr no, <laughs> Twilight Prince. <laughs> I meant <laughs> God, Twilight Sparkle. Twilight Princess. <laughs> what was I thinking? Anyway, 
<laughs> so while she did her Twilight Sparkle voice, and then he, the guy said, Will you please do your Bubbles voice? And he did it, and, and Tara did it, and he squealed like a girl. It was amazing. And then the guy who was in front of him, uh, the, that was a brony, and he had like so many like sealed My Little Pony figures and toys and stuff like that, and he wanted her to sign it, and, and she, then she did the Twilight Sparkle voice, and then he freaked out. It was like, that was awesome. That was like one of my favorite convention moments ever. But yeah, my favorite convention moment, hands down, was when I met Ma D Danny and Mike, and they did the um, the panel, the Pete and Pete reunion panel. And then, then Joey Fatone came on by saying that his name was Frank, and he was asking a whole bunch of questions that everybody else in the audience, that in the in the room, was already asking. So, yeah, that was that was amazing. Anyway, top five cartoons you forgot shows. Arthur a meme. Okay. I mean, I did hear about that Arthur meme about, like, the whole fist thing, but I don't get it. Seriously, there's, there's just some memes that I really don't understand. Like, what does the fist have anything to do with anything? You know, it's like, oh, you know, I'm angry, show fist, or whatever, but eh. I have no interest in that kind of stuff. I mean, if they're saying that Arthur's forgotten, then ah, <laughs> oh, you are sadly mistaken. I mean, last time I checked, Arthur's still on PBS, running for over 20 years. So sorry, if that, if Arthur is the forgotten cartoon, then you are sadly mistaken. Or maybe you didn't realize that Arthur was running this long, and I have to concentrate. I, I apologize. <clears throat> uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. Val. Vale Ski Bum 94 is an incredibly clickbaity channel. I have never heard of that. So, yeah, I don't know anything about that guy or whatever. So, Vale Ski Bum 94. So, yeah, you're. I, if I pronounce it wrong, then I'm sorry. You probably already know that. I've never heard of this guy if I pronounce his name wrong. Is one of the most monotone voices I've ever heard of on YouTube. Oh, huh, okay. Is he? Uh, when you seem like monotone, do you mean like he he talks like this and he gives no no no, no inflections like so like or is it like it's like um if I if I were to turn off the microphone and be like it's like you know like kind of like low pitch or something like that? Or is it like he gives no energy? Kind of like uh, Jeff Goldblum in like Jurassic Park. It's like, you know, he kind of like stutters in his speak or whatever. But yeah, I'm curious. Again, I, I don't know anything about this stuff. I mean, I I've already mentioned this before that I only see like a handful of people on YouTube and um, I mostly follow my colleagues' work, so I know pretty much little to nothing about these other guys. Okay, I remember him saying he doesn't like Steven Universe and Star Versus, but when Gravity Falls entered, he started pandering to those fan bases. Why? Why would you do that? Why would you pander to the fan base? I mean, if there's if if the if a show they liked ended, then why would he say anything negative about it? I don't I don't really understand. Pete and Pete is on. Let's see. Pete and Pete is on Nick Splat tonight. Awesome. I will definitely be checking it out. There you are. Let's see. I'm pretty sure Make It Pop and The Other Kingdom were also created by Tom Lynch and were in adaptions of Latin America shows. Nick Cannon also created Make It Pop too. Ah. Yeah, it's definitely- it kind of reminds me a little bit of Romeo, in which Thomas W. Lynch was also the co-creator of that, alongside with Master P and, um, 
somebody else, but yeah. Wouldn't- I mean, it, I don't know- I mean, I personally don't know, to be quite honest. Anyway, let me just get- ah, crap, get, get off of me. Yeah, let me just get the other power bomb that's- uh, get off of me. Okay, now that I got the power bombs, let me just get the other ones. Okay, the fist is from Arthur's big hit. Yeah, I know that the fist is from there. I've actually seen that episode when it first came out. But, I mean, is the meme about the episode or just it's just the plain fist? Yeah, I remember that episode from a long time ago. It's the episode in which when DW comes by, ruins his model... Uh, was a model plane or something? And he gets so angry at her that he actually hits her. So, is it... Is that... The, is that the significance of the meme? Is that, you know, hitting somebody? If that's the case, that's kind of violent, to be quite honest. Arthur is keeping PBS alive. Oh, really? I mean, if you're talking about, like, PBS kids, then I don't know. But PBS is still around. I mean, they have various shows. I mean, they still have, um, you know, Masterpiece Theater, which my mom loves to watch. She's been watching, um... She's been watching the Victoria program, kind of like her replacement for Downton Abbey ever since that show got canceled. And also, she's been watching, um... I forgot what the show is uh, the show is called, but there's another show that she's been watching on Masterpiece or on PBS in which it involves with, like, this family from uh, England who moves over to Australia. She's been watching that a lot, and, um... Let's see, and also, we watch the BBC News every night when I, whenever we get home from work. You know, just to catch up on the news. So we watch that as well. And, you know, there's Nova, and, you know, there's, um... Uh, you know, Ken Burns' documentaries, and there's a whole bunch of shows. So, yeah, I mean, I don't think that, per se, it's, like... Arthur's keeping the entire thing alive. And maybe, I, I mean, personally, again, I don't know anything about what PBS Kids is showing. But I think it's due to maybe, you know, I, I mean, I know that Ready, Jet, Go is on the air. So, I mean, if that show is still going on, then that's pretty cool. Oh, along with Sesame Street. Well, yeah, Sesame Street as well. Okay, did you know that Joey Album directed an episode of Daria? No, I did not! That's actually pretty cool. <laughs> Maybe I should have asked him that question when, it, when I had him on the podcast. But no, I didn't know that. That's actually pretty cool. Okay, I can't go there yet. I don't have the grapple beam, so I have to go back to Norfair. Ugh. <clears throat> One of my least favorite places to go to, by the way. Alright, and we're back to the beginning. Now we just have a whole bunch of power-ups nowadays. So we can just pretty much breeze through this now. But yeah, I definitely need to get the grapple beam next. Okay, uh, it's both. He's low pitch and he has no energy. Watch one of his videos and you'll see what I mean. Okay. Um, let's see. Valix Bum, I, I, again, I don't know how to pronounce his name, is one of the most subscribed animation reviewers, and he's terrible. He repeats everything people say in other videos. He just repeats the popular opinion everyone says and gives nothing new. Oh, I see. Well, that's too bad, because usually, you know, when it comes to, like, the animation reviewer stuff, I mean... It's kind of funny, um, you know, I, I've been seeing, I, I think I even saw my buddy Taylor post a video about, like, how, um, not, 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 not Taylor posting a video, he shared a video on Twitter about, like, somebody talked about, like, how, um, animation YouTube channels are not as high as video games, and, you know, I, um, they were talking about, like, you know, 
they're wondering on why, and I think it's because that sometimes there's a lot of animated website, uh, animation websites that don't give anything new. And if that's the case, then that's a real shame. I mean, I don't claim to be, like, a, po uh, a channel that dedicates myself all to animation. I mean, I do podcasts and I do videos about mostly Nickelodeon stuff, sure, but... I mean, I just li I like to cover both live action and animation. But, yeah, I, I just wish that, you know... Um, I just wish that, you know, people who tend to... You know, do want to focus on like repeating what everybody else has been saying, as opposed to like thinking about what they thought about. Is you know, I, I you know, I just wish that they would really be f a little bit more open to expressing how they personally feel. But then again, n you know, maybe that's why there's more subscribe because they actually follow what the general audience wants to hear. Like, if I, you know, I've already mentioned this many times before about, like, you know, some of my opinions about certain shows or certain episodes has gotten some people really angry so much that they threaten my life. So, yeah, I mean, it's like, you want to say about how you personally feel about things, but then on the other hand, there are some people who would be downright angry about what you would say. So, you know, it's like, pick your poison. Would you prefer to hear somebody say their uh, personal opinions about what they think about programs, but then it's not what you thought it would be? Or it would be like the same thing that you would hear over and over again, but it's an opinion that they feel is, or they know it's more comforting to them. So, yeah, it's it's difficult. I mean, it's, it's even difficult with like movies and video games. So, yeah, it's it's really hard. It, trust me, it's not easy. It's really not easy. Okay, let's see. He sounds like an imitating old man. Okay. Again, like I said, I've never heard of the guy, so I'm sorry. Uh, let's see. Have I- have you- okay, so let's see. The ending to Farewell My Little Viking Part 1 scared me as a kid. I think it was the music that did it. Oh yeah, that, that that's actually one of my favorite episodes because it actually focuses on, you know, big uh, Little Pete and, and uh, Artie. Giving a really interesting showcase into, you know, um, Artie being afraid that Little Pete doesn't want him anymore. And when Little Pete stands up to paper cut. One of the many times in which they've you know, have, um, a bully that's only been a one-off character, similar to, like, Open Face. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it's always been one of my favorite episodes, especially with, you know, when Artie has to leave and he says goodbye. It's definitely one of the saddest moments that I can recall on. I told you not to touch it. Boom. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. I don't know. Exactly. Uh, let's see. I'll cut the subsidiary to PBS. I love PBS. Okay. Um. Hey, Irvin. Welcome back. Okay, I have the complete season of Angry Beavers now, and I'm on season three. Awesome. That's great to hear, Nasaya. Have I heard from Janice Coway? No, I have not. Uh, I don't even know. Does she have like a, um, does she have a Twitter or Facebook account? Because no, I haven't heard anything from her. So yeah, I'm sorry. Have I ever seen Gremlins before? Yes, I did see Gremlins before, and sometimes that movie is scary. That movie sometimes freaks me out with those Gremlins and the fact that when you have the you know, the big reveal on the evil ones after you feed them after midnight. It's like, man, it, it, it's really legitimately frightened me. And, and also that scene in which the girl talks about how she doesn't like Christmas anymore because her Santa, uh, her, her father dressed up as Santa and he got stuck in the chimney. It's like, damn, that is scary. That's creepy stuff. Seriously. Anyway. Oh, I need the grapple beam for this one, don't I? Yes, I do. And I don't have it yet. I, do need, I need to find it. Let's 
see. Um, best worst adaptation I've ever seen. Uh, let's see. Uh, Lord of the Rings movies were definitely a great adaptation from the books. The Hobbit, not so much. Um, as for, like, worse adaptations... Uh... Yeah, I'll definitely have to get back to you on that. Um, yeah, um, this, the, uh, Hulk Hogan was in the sequel of Gremlins, Arun. That's where he was from. Yeah. That was when they were having, like, a spoof on the original Gremlins, so, yeah. That's where uh, Hulk Hogan was in. Uh, no, I have not read the Loud House's comic book before, so, sorry. Candy Crush is coming to CBS as a live-action game show. Really? Candy Crush live-action game show. I mean, Candy Crush is like, you know, it's a puzzle game. I mean, is it supposed to be like, you know, they answer questions and then they have to put the pieces together or something? I don't know. But yeah, that's actually interesting. Okay. Yeah, I'm curious to find out what they're gonna do with Candy Crush as a, you know, as a live action game show. I'm really curious now. Yeah, the last time that I can recall on a live-action game show based off of a game was like, You Don't Know Jack, and that was a disaster. Uh, Cartoon Cartoon Fridays, did you see it in at least in its early time? Well, yeah, of course. I mean, of course I knew about Cartoon Cartoon Fridays. I mean, I, I, mean, I knew about the, you know, the show when I was a kid, but... Uh, as for the block, yeah. Um, I did know about the block. But I wasn't, like... I, I, I mostly focused on, like, Toonami and Adult Swim more than, like, Cartoon Cartoon Fridays because, you know, I was already in high school around that time. Check. Okay. There we go. This is where I'm supposed to go. the invaders in comic books no i have not uh i did promise uh somebody who asked me to do a discussion about those comics that when volume one of invaders in gets released and i do have the opportunity to buy it then i'll definitely do like a comic book review or something I don't know whether I want to review it by its volume or review, like, one issue at a time. But yeah, I definitely do want to get to it at some point. Um, let's see. Least favorite Adult Swim show. Oh, boy. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> um, let's see. Like, some of the more recent stuff that has been coming out, like... Uh, a lot of my colleagues have been talking about, like, you know, Mr. Pickles and stuff like that. It's like, 
Uh, and I also, you know, I, I maybe this is like an unpopular opinion or something, but I remember when I was in college about how everybody was just so obsessed with um, Tim and Eric awesome show Great Job. And I saw a handful of episodes and I didn't get it. Maybe I wasn't supposed to get it, but just weird. Oh, there we go. There's Kronkemeyer. Come on. But yeah, I, I mean, there were some episodes that I did find okay, but I just wasn't so obsessed with it. I knew somebody in college who loved that show, and he was obsessed with it. Also, um, let's see, there was also one uh, Nine Ounce Mouse. I think I saw, like, maybe one clip of it, and I was just like, I didn't really care. steps. Oh, come on! You're supposed to be dead now! There you go. Now you're dead. Seriously, that is disturbing right there. Falling into a big pool of acid. Wow. Anyway, shameless ripoff. Um, let's see. Uh, a lot of the stuff from the Asylum and Video Brinqueo, in which they're trying to be nothing more than just cheap copies of, you know, popular movies. Seriously, go check out my buddies, uh, Y Boy and um, Decker Shadow. They're discussed about a lot of the Video Brinqueo stuff and um, the Asylum stuff. It's it's really awful. Anyway, so Adult Swim. Yeah, some of the more recent stuff I just didn't really get. Um, but, and you know, also another thing that I just didn't really care about uh, was like, um, let's see another one. Squidbillies! Yeah, that's another one I- I just- I- Squidbillies I never liked. I really didn't like Squidbillies. I mean, I don't know, maybe it's because I just don't like country music or something, but seriously, just a bunch of hillbilly squids? I just didn't find it good. I didn't find it funny. Yeah, th those are some of my least favorite Adult Swim programs. Uh, yeah, I'm not, I'm not supposed to go up there yet. All right, uh, you're all out of questions? Okay, see you later, Pocketbook. Thank you for joining. Do I have any Nickelodeon collectibles? Um, I just have a handful of uh, DVDs. I have a Hey Arnold uh, bobblehead. Um, I have the books uh, that I've been talking about ad nauseum over the years. Yeah, I don't have a lot of collectibles, to be quite honest. I have a guitar doll. But yeah, that's, I, that's pretty much it. I don't really have a lot of stuff. Okay, Mac and Me is the worst shameless ripoff. The first time I saw the poster, I immediately knew it was an E.T. ripoff. Ooh. That sucks. Uh, which cartoon should get a comic book? Uh, <laughs> go check out my top 10 Nicktoons and comic book adaptations with Comic Uno on my YouTube channel. You'll definitely find out what Nicktoons I would love to see make in comic book form. Alright, I say the bad emoji is more like a bad skin rash is there now, but it'll soon go away. Yeah, I've been seeing a lot of people giving so much crap about the emoji movie. I mean, it's very similar to, like, Ghostbusters 2016, in which, like, the moment that there was, like, trailers and information about it, everybody just seemed to immediately hate it. So, yeah, I mean, it's like what Arun says, you know, we're just gonna have- it, it may seem awful now, but trust me, we'll just have to wait a while and then it'll be gone- just as quick as it arrived so for those who are already hating on it and just putting in too much of that then trust me it'll come away it'll go away really soon unless it's like a really legitimately awful movie 
then yeah, I mean, I have nothing to say about that. Okay, we're good. There we go. There's the grapple beam, finally! Now we can go over to the sunken um, ship. Okay, what, let's see, what is my opinion on, um, Goldfinger? He was a James Bond villain, oh, Coldfinger, oh, I thought you meant Goldfinger from James Bond. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, basically that Coldfinger is a parody of Goldfinger. I mean, like, no, wait, is that, wait, yeah, so that's basically it. That's basically what the joke is, is that Coldfinger is a parody of Goldfinger from the James Bond movie. I mean, it, it's, um, it's either, you know, I, I guess, yeah, I mean, it's like, you know, with a lot of James Bond parodies, I mean, it's pretty easy to make fun of them. Like, you know, you have, obviously, with, um, you know, all that, and obviously the Austin Powers movies, there are, like, jokes in itself about that, so, yeah, it's, it's actually pretty cool. Oh no, I'm gonna be dead soon. I need to get out of here. Alright, let me just save right here just in case I die. Alright, see you later, Messiah. Thank you for joining. I'm kind of a bookworm, so I love Tale of the Bookish Babysitter. Yeah, that's also a really good episode, too. Yeah, really interesting episode. You know, you you have this kid who's obsessed with television and he doesn't he has no interest in Oh, I'm dead. He has no interest in reading books, so he gets a book and he reads it. Let me just go back to where I was before. There we go. Let's see. Are you um, a fan, or have you heard of Weird Al? Yes, I, I think I even mentioned this in the last live stream that I really do love Weird Al Yankovic's work. Uh, I listen to like Amish Paradise and um, let's see the the uh, let's see Amish Paradise and uh, I'm Fat and um, let's see You're Pitiful, the Virus Song, uh, Virus Alert. Uh, the polka dance. Yeah, really do love his- uh, white and nerdy. Yeah, really do love his work. And it's also pretty cool that nowadays he's been voicing a lot of characters in cartoons. That's actually pretty awesome. Even though I haven't seen- I, I've only seen like only two episodes of My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Everybody's been telling me, go watch the Weird Al Yankovic episode. It's like, I've been hearing so much about it, and it's like, now I'm curious as to watching that episode. Okay, I'm full health again, so let me just save right here. There we go. Okay. <laughs> I love the eBay song. Yeah, the eBay song's also pretty cool, too. Or how about this? How about the song in which he wants to sue everybody? That's also pretty ridiculous. About like it, how even the pettiest things, you want to sue somebody because you are not happy with the results, even though that you yourself did it. It's like it's just dumb, but it's it's actually pretty funny. Ah. Kath Susie back then made a cute bubbles voice. Oh yeah, that's right. When she voiced for the oh yeah uh, for the what a cartoon show, that was back when um, you know they were still pitching the idea for Powerpuff Girls. Ah. Yeah, and Kath Susie would have made a pretty good bubbles, but Tara Strong, um, you know, you, I mean, I'm sorry, you know, Kath Susie did a great job, but I mean, I just cannot see Bubbles without thinking about Tara Strong. She did a great job voicing Bubbles. 
You know, it's, it's funny because some somebody was actually asking me to do a from pilot to final product on uh, Powerpuff Girls. And it's like, which one do you want me to do? Do you want me to do the What a Cartoon shorts, or do you want me to actually do one on the Whoop Ass Girls? So maybe I can do like a, you know, like similar to what I did for Hey Arnold, in which I talk about the origins of Arnold. Maybe I should do something similar in which I discuss about like the origins of the Powerpuff Girls. But then again, if I do, then I most likely will have to discuss more about the Powerpuff Girls reboot. Which I'm not interested in it, to be quite honest. I mean, unless somebody really, really wants me to do it, I have no interest in watching the Powerpuff Girls reboot. But yeah, um, but yeah, I, 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 don't worry, I know I've been receiving a lot of requests for, like, various from pilot to final product episodes, like, I already re received one on Adventure Time, I already received one on Jimmy Neutron, I received one for Gravity Falls, so yeah, I do know that, um, I do, I do see those requests, and don't worry, I mean, I'll do, I will get to them at some point. But you know me, I mean, I like to take my time with my videos. Okay, what do you think of seasons 2, 3, and 4 of Johnny Bravo? I noticed a lot of the fans of the show only liked the first season and it went downhill afterwards. I'll definitely have to rewatch the show at some point. But, um, yeah, I think I recall like the later seasons not being that great, but I'll definitely have to look back on it. I remember when I first saw Johnny Bravo on What a Cartoon, and I just remember just how incredibly weird it was, but it was actually pretty funny. But yeah, I'll definitely have to rewatch the show at some point. I'll have to watch it for some purpose, I don't know. Like, you know, like I said, I mean, I don't do a lot of reviews, so... Okay. Here we go. But yeah, definitely, um, yeah, if I want to discuss about Johnny Bravo, I have to have a reason on why I want to do one. But yeah, I do remember liking Johnny Bravo. I haven't seen the show in a while, so I'll definitely have to watch it again to see how I feel about it. Let's see, my favorite is Word Crimes. Uh, I've never heard of that before, so if that's a board game or a card game, then yeah, I've never heard of it. Looks, It sounds pretty cool. I'll have to definitely explain to me what it is. Yeah, I definitely want to buy some more board games. Who knows, maybe I can... I mean, I don't know how it will work, but I'll definitely like to do like a live stream of me playing a board game and maybe you guys can like be the other players or something. That'd be kind of full. That'd, that'd be actually pretty, pretty fun. Something a little bit different. I, I don't know how it'll work. Like, you know, it's like, you know, do you get like a dice and you have to roll it? Or do you like post the picture, uh, your answers on the, the, the live chat? I have no idea. I have no idea how it'll work, but I think it'll be fun. I think it'll be a lot of fun. Oh, Word Crumbs is a parody song. I haven't heard of that one yet. If maybe if I maybe I have heard of it, but I don't know what the song like the you know the you know oh how, how would I say it? It's like I mean I have to listen to the song in order for me to know about what Word Crimes is. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I I need to put it in context. Parody of Blurred Lines came out during his last album in 2014 about common grammar mistakes people make. Oh okay. Yeah, I haven't listened to his new album yet. Um, maybe I, I maybe like heard maybe like a song or two, but I haven't listened to the entire album. Yeah, I really want to listen to it if that's the case. It's kind of funny because I think, 
um, you know, my friend Decker was talking about, like, certain words that people say that is different than what is actually said, like something that's mispronounced. So yeah, I think that would be kind of cool to actually listen to something about that. Yeah, just need to get a few more things and then I'm over heading over to the sunken ship. Okay, this way is the way to Ridley, so I'm gonna go there later. I'll actually go there much later because I don't have all the equipment yet. I need, still need the gravity suit. I need to get some more beams, like the wave beam and the plasma beam. And then I need to get some more missiles and then I can take down Ridley. But yeah, I'd love to, um... Anyway, so yeah, let me know in the- in the- I, I mean, I actually wanted to do one on You Don't Know Jack, but guess what? I found out on the Steam version, you- it's local multiplayer! You can't play it online! That sucks! So you're trying to tell me that local multiplayer is only available in the Steam version? And I can't play with anybody else online? I mean, You Don't Know Jack and all those games are the perfect games to play with multiplayer. I know they have it for the console version, but I only have my computer to work with, so... You know, to do live streams, so yeah, that sucks. Okay, what are my thoughts on the Shrek movies? Uh, love the first two. As of right now, the first Shrek movie is the only movie that I saw four times. The first time I saw it with my mom, second time I saw it on a school trip, third time I saw it with my grandmother when she took me there, fourth time I saw it by myself because I just loved the movie so much. I was in high school when the movie came out and I remember when I first saw it, it was just something I've never seen before. It was just, it was so hilarious to me. I remember at the theater, everybody was just reacting so loudly to the movie. It was just a great experience. One of my favorite movie experiences ever. Yeah, definitely one of my favorite movie experiences. I had a blast with the movie. Shrek 2 was also a lot of fun. Really liked that movie. Thought it was really funny. Introduced a lot of great characters. A lot of fun with that movie. The third movie, not so much. I remember when I was at the theaters watching that movie and there was barely any laughter. Like, I heard maybe like a chuckle here and there, but nobody was like legitimately laughing. And the fourth movie was the same thing. I saw uh, the fourth movie, and it got maybe like a chuckle here and there, but nobody was bursting out laughing like the first two movies, so... And, and I also heard the news that they're making a fifth Shrek movie. It's like, don't you think that's enough? How many Shrek movies do you need? I mean, seriously. That's just crazy to think that, you know, now we're having a fifth Shrek movie, even though, seriously, I mean, I think that's enough. I think focus on something else, DreamWorks. Come on. I'm going to sign off now. Thanks for hosting this. Be sure to check out my Nickelodeon podcast. Uh, thank you very much, Jordan. You have yourself a great day. Yeah, I'm, I'm definitely getting out of here. Okay, though the first and fourth Shrek movies were okay, Love the Two didn't care for Shrek the Third. Yeah, I think that Shrek the Third was like everybody's least favorite Shrek movie. So, yeah, I, I, I do remember when I first saw it, it's like nobody laughed or anything like that. I think the scene with the princess was pretty cool, but other than that, I just it just wasn't really that funny. It didn't really la leave a massive impact on me, and I guess it didn't leave a massive impact on anybody. And thank you, Arun. I will definitely check out my messages when I'm done with the live stream.
Hey, Nasaya, welcome back. Have you heard of the common misconception about Nickelodeon back in the early 90s when the Nickelodeon channel was just materializing? I saw that th I saw on thing with about Ren and Stimpy. Uh, one thing about Ren and Stimpy. Yeah, I, I haven't heard about that yet. Or maybe I have, but maybe you're not done with it. But yeah, please let me know. Yeah, I think I'm done here. I'm gonna leave out of here. I'm gonna be heading over to the sh sunken ship next. Yeah, yeah, let me just... Let's get out of here. Yeah. I'm just gonna water break real quick. There we go. Okay, thoughts on Jimmy Neutron. Uh, I've already been told about Jimmy Neutron many times by people. They say that they love that show. I think it's okay. I think it's just a little bit overrated in my opinion. I think that Jimmy is- it, I mean, a lot of the times he acts really arrogant. He thinks that he's like the smartest boy in the world, even though that- In a sense it is true that he's mostly surrounded by people who are not as smart, but he just acts like a big show-off. I felt that the way that Dexter was able to pull it off in Dexter's laboratory was a little bit better in my opinion. Mostly because, you know, Dexter didn't have a lot of friends, so, you know, the fact that he was by himself, he did, he did feel that kind of arrogance, but with Jimmy, he acts more like a normal boy with friends, so it just feels like he's much more arrogant than he needed to be. But uh, I, I actually prefer Jimmy's portrayal in the movie than in the TV show, which I know a lot of people actually would probably hate me on this because a lot of people like the TV show more than the movie. But I thought that the movie was actually a really fun movie. I mean, it's not the best movie I've ever seen, but it's actually a fun movie. Yeah, really entertaining. Um, but yeah, there were some things about the TV show that I did enjoy. Like, I enjoyed some of the TV movies. I enjoyed Carl. Carl was a fun character. Um, yeah, there were some things I like about the, you know, the, the TV series, but I, I just don't like it like everybody else likes it, you know? But it's 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 fine. It's it's okay. It's fine. Maybe because the show came out when I was already in high school. But then again, Avatar came out when I was in college and I love that show. So, I don't know. Maybe because I already saw Dexter's lab when I was a kid and I already knew about like a kid genius who has a lab and stuff like that. So, I don't know. I mean, there's some things I do like about it, don't get me wrong, but not as much as everybody else seems to like about it. Let's see. Uh, the only reason why they're doing a fifth Shrek movie due to Comcast buying DreamWorks, and they're hoping to revive the franchise. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, really? I mean, Captain Underpants was done by DreamWorks, that movie didn't do successful. But then again, I, I guess I kind of understand because their other movies haven't done really well, like, uh, you know, um, Home, I think, and, um, let's see, The Croods, they did pretty decently, I mean, they even have a, an animated series on Netflix, but I guess they're looking for, like, a next big gigantic success, but they don't need to rely on releasing Shrek to get themselves a hit. At least I'm hoping that they don't. But yeah, um, well, I mean, I'm I'm not gonna jump I'm not gonna jump into conclusion saying that this Sh the Shrek movie is gonna be awful. I'm just gonna wait it out. I'm gonna wait it out and see for myself on how they do it. Let's see. My opinion, Jin Cindy is more of an arrogant 
show off than Jimmy. In fact, one of the show's biggest problems is that everyone beats down on Jimmy, even his own friends are nasty towards him. Hmm. I guess, um... You know, I guess, that, I mean, it's, it's kind of a shame because, I mean, that scene in the movie in which she actually apologizes to Cindy for acting so mean. I mean, I thought that maybe they would start off with, like, being friends, but I guess that kind of threw out the window when everybody was starting to say that, Oh, Cindy and Jimmy have a relationship together. It's like, okay, that's fine if you want to have a love-hate relationship. I, I just find the whole friendship thing in the movie a little bit better. I felt it was a nice progression. There we go. But yeah, I mean, I guess not every character in the series is perfect. I mean, you have Jimmy acting arrogant, but then Cindy's acting more arrogant, and then all his friends are sometimes mean to him or don't do really stupid things. So it's like, yeah, you can't win. I mean, again, it's up to Jimmy to save the day. Okay, now we're heading over to the sunken ship. Fantastic, because I really need the gravity suit so I can be able to move around water. Then afterwards, we have to fight Fantoon. I remember when I was doing a playtest of the of Super Metroid, I was having a lot of difficulty with this part, so I'm hoping that it, I don't have the same difficulty. Okay, let's try this. Here we go. There we go. Okay, perfect. That went smoothly. I remember I had to do that ten times because it, it didn't go through for some reason. All right. Do I remember folding and hanging? Oh yeah, that song that um, Carl sung with the folding and hanging song. Yeah, apparently Debbie Derryberry, the voice of Jimmy Neutron, she said that that um, that song was improvised by Rob Paulson. Apparently, it's like, you know, um, I, I don't think it was even in the script. I think that there was like a scene in which like, you know, Carl loves folding and hanging his clothes more than anything. And then Rob just came out of the blues singing that folding and hanging song, which is great because, you know, Rob's a great improviser. I'm also, speaking of which, I'm really excited that Talking Tunes is going to be associated with the Nerdist channel, and they're going to have, like, a nice big budget, and they're going to have, um, uh, what you call it? They're going to have, like, a nice big screening and all that stuff, so I'm really excited that Talking Tunes is coming back with a full force. And that's, uh, if you're actually, conf if you're wondering about my discussion about Talking Tunes, I'm actually going to be doing a top 10 or top 20 Talking Tunes episodes in the future. I don't know when I'm going to release it, but I definitely want to release it sometime this year. BRB, pick warming up Chinese food. Okay, Arun, catch a bit. Okay, here we go. Let me just save really quick. Okay. I've been watching The Proud Family recently, and the way Penny's friends constantly stab her in the back and treat her poorly annoys me. Does that ever bother you? Uh, like I said, I've only watched The Proud Family in the first season, and I've only remembered like a handful of episodes, which is why I did the Black History Month episode. So... Um, somebody requested me to do a discussion video about the episode where, um, Penny goes over to living with the Muslim family. That's actually an episode that they want me to discuss about. So, yeah, I'll definitely need to cover that in the future. But as of right now, I haven't seen all of the episodes. I've only seen a few episodes from the first season. And I did like it. As for, like, her friends being stabbing, uh, stabbing her back, that's actually kind of... Um, kind of sad, actually. Seems to be a reoccurring thing a lot of shows, you know, with friends stabbing friends in the uh, in the back. It's like, whatever happened to friendship, you know? Have you seen any episodes of a show you remember loving as a kid, but you're older, that you don't like it? Possibly. I'll definitely have to keep in mind of any TV shows that I thought of what, uh, when I saw it as a kid and I loved it. 
Um, the only the only thing I it thinks uh, that it comes into my head was when I saw what a cartoon as a kid, and I really liked the um, the Yucky Duck shorts. But then I realized it was very similar to um, what you call it, very similar to Ren and Stimpy. And I was like, oh, really? I I like this. That's kind of, that's kind of sad. I need some health. There we go. I'm almost dead too. Oh no. I need to stay alive. I need to stay alive. Okay, I think I'm gonna be okay for now. I think I think he's dead. I think he's dead. Yes! Woo! I was close. I heard they're planning to do an Ultra Lord spin-off before deciding to do Planet Chain as a spin-off. Do you think that would have been a better idea? Um, any spin-off would have been better than Planet Chain. Any spin-off. I would have loved a Carl spin-off. Any spin-off would have been better. Yeah, but them deciding to do Planet Chain was an awful idea. It was like... It was like dead on arrival. Doom from the start. All right, let's get the gravity suit. Okay, a better idea would have been to make a fourth season. I think that the uh, the series finale that we get with the TV movie and all that stuff, I think it was the, the best ending that they could have done for Jimmy Neutron. Based off of the episode ideas they were planning, that would have been awesome. Yeah, I think that Ultra Lord would have been a pretty interesting idea. I, I'm curious as to why they didn't do it. Probably because the company was going bankruptcy when they released the Amp Bully. So maybe they didn't have all the funds. But yeah, um, would have been pretty interesting to see. The creator of Jimmy Neutron actually didn't like the idea of Sheen having a spinoff. I don't blame him. I don't blame him either. To be quite honest, I, I mean, there were some moments of Sheen that I liked, but I didn't really care for Sheen at all. I just thought of Sheen as, like, it was pretty annoying. I mean, he was... I mean, you know, if you want to have an annoying character, you have to make him at least some moments in which he was charming. And he did have some pretty decent one-liners, but I just never was too crazy about him. But yeah, having him have a spin-off... Man, was it a bad idea. It was an awful idea. I mean, it just fell apart. I remember when I first saw the show, it's like, man, the show is awful. I mean, I knew that it was going to be one of those shows that everybody was going to hate, and I was right. Everybody hated it. Ah, I have to beat one more. There you are. Alright. Is that it? Please let it be it. Ah, one more. There we go. Okay, I think it's supposed to go this way. Yeah, I'm supposed to go this way. Let's see. Who are your favorite Jimmy Neutron characters? Hmm. 
Ah, uh, I can't go through there? Ah. Alright, fine. I won't get it. Okay, I'm supposed to go down that hall, so let me just... There we go. There it is. As for my favorite Jimmy Neutron characters, I mean, I like Carl. He's also fun. Um, the 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 parents of Jimmy uh, are pretty funny. Uh, you know, they're your stereotypical parents, but you know, they they play some humorous moments, okay. And I also like the villains. I think that was like the best thing that they added into the series because. You know, after the first season of Jimmy Neutron, I felt that it was just really monotonous and redundant with, you know, oh no, Jimmy did something bad. He has to do a brain blast and fix it. It's like, eh, it's just, it, it was getting tired after a while. But then when they introduced the villains is when it, things started getting really interesting, like for Professor Calamitous and Beautiful Gorgeous. Then they had Jet Fusion. They had the Junk Man. They had the th three alien guys. So yeah, the, the the villains were definitely were like the highlights for me. Let's see. I'm getting a cat dog pop figure next. Can't wait. Sounds cool. Yeah, um I've been seeing a lot of news about the pop figures and um yeah, it sounds great. I'm I'm really looking forward to at least getting maybe one of them. So yeah, it's cool that you're getting a cat dog one. I, that's probably one I wouldn't get, but uh, it's good for you. Definitely, um... I don't know which one I want to get, personally. I mean, the, you know, uh, there's a lot of them that are being available right now, so I have to definitely think it over. Okay, thank you, Mr. Chozo statue. And there's the gravity suit. Yay. The one thing I liked about, uh, oh, the villains were great, but another thing I liked about Jimmy Neutron were the inventions. Yeah, the inventions were pretty cool. Yeah, I do, I do agree. But I think the villains were definitely the highlight for me. Hooray, I can finally run in water! Woo! Uh, oh, time, too. Now I can finally get over to Meridia. Would you ever do a top 10 list of your favorite Nick characters from different Nick shows? Um, not really. I feel like that's a list that's been done already by a lot of other people. But, um, I know that, like, top 10 favorite episodes, is, they've already been done to death as well, but at least, um, I like to do a different take on it, but, yeah. Um, as for me, um, probably not anytime soon. If there are gonna be, like, another top 10 list I'm gonna do, like, in the future, uh, it probably wouldn't be that. But that does sound pretty interesting, like discussing about like some of my favorite characters from other Nicktoons or Nick shows. That'd be a cool idea, but I'm not planning on one anytime soon. The Hub has family game now, but it's based off of board games from Parker Brothers. I'm not sure if they still make episodes, but it's a decent show. I've heard about it, but I've never seen it. But at least it's about different game shows, uh, you know, based off of board games, but... You know, CBS wants to do a game show based off of Candy Crush. Why Candy Crush? I mean, Candy Crush, I mean, you don't do much on it, except, like, you match the little diamond things. I mean, unless they can do something creative with it, I'd be more open to it. But, yeah, I'll definitely have to see what they do. But, yeah, the last time that I saw, like, a board game show was, like, there was Scrabble, there was Monopoly, there was... I think, uh... Let's see what else was there. But yeah, there was like a few of them, and some of them did decently, but they weren't like massively successful. But I'm, I'm open to it if it works out right. I mean, I remember when I saw You Don't Know Jack many years ago, and I re I just remember it was just a massive disappointment. Like, I, you know, I, all, I respect Paul Rubens as an actor, 
And I also love the You Don't Know Jack game. I mean, the newer ones, not much of the older ones. I think the older ones are really dated by today's standards, but the newer ones are so much fun. And the fact that you can make a game show off of it, it was like many possibilities, but it just was a massive letdown. Who knows, maybe I'll have to discuss about that in a future video. I don't know. If any of you guys are even interested in me talking about the You Don't Know Jack game show, then let me know. Reserve tank. Yes, I got a reserve tank. Now I can finally have some reserved energy in case my health goes low. Yes, uh, Stewie, Paul Rubens did host a You Don't Know Jack. Yeah, I knew that already. Although he named himself completely different. It's, it's funny that, you know, it wasn't Cookie Masterson. But it was somebody else. I think even I think it was Cookie Masterson who did like the, like the, um, the, the the narration for it. But he wasn't the host. It was kind of weird. But yeah, I mean, it's just. I mean, it was a massive disappointment. It was just really weird. I mean, I expected you don't know Jack to be weird, but it was just. It didn't really sit with me very well, you know. I just thought it could have been better. Where's I supposed to go? Oh, here. There we go. Okay, now I can get the missile. There we go. I'm writing a story for Gremlins 3 involving Gremlins having vampire powers. That'll be interesting. I mean, the, the Gremlins have done a whole bunch of things. Like, in Gremlins 2, there were so many variations of Gremlins. So, yeah, I mean, that'd be kind of cool. Is it based off of the back gremlins? Because maybe, you know, you can do a movie based off of them instead of, you know, just regular bats. Now they're vampires. That'd be kind of interesting to see. All right, right before I get to Meridia, I just want to explore a little bit and get a few more items. Okay, Funko Pops are the new Beanie Babies. Yeah, I, I have been hearing a lot about that. Uh, okay, I'm gonna be really careful about getting that E-Tank. Because there's actually a hole right over there. So, be really careful. Ha! Got it! Whew! Okay. Okay, let's get out of here. There we go. Fungo Pops are the new Beanie Babies. Yeah, I do agree. Those are the new Beanie Babies. I see them collecting them like crazy. But with Beanie Babies, I mean, they were like, you know, different, you know, animals. But Funko figurines are basically like, they're based off of pop culture items. But yeah, um, I don't know, maybe sometime in the future they will be completely dated and then we'll focus on something else to collect. Wouldn't be surprised if that were to happen. But yeah, I uh, I definitely do see where you're coming from. Okay, let me just go down there for a second. Hold on. There we go. What was my favorite book as a kid? 
Oh, that's a good question. Uh, I always loved reading Charles Dickens' book as a kid. Like, uh, I, I read Oliver Twist, I read David Copperfield, uh, then I read, um, like, I read a lot of, um, let's see what else, uh, Goosebumps books, that's how Kevin and I first met. We've read a lot of Goosebumps books. And, uh, then later on, when I was in middle school, was when I started reading the Harry Potter books. But yeah, those are some of my favorite books as a kid. Let's see, well, let me just get away for the Dragora to come back. Run with it. Whee! Okay, there we go. Ah. As much as I love the Shine Spark in the Metroid games, I'm just sad that in Super Metroid it hurts you. But then it, make, it makes a lot of sense because it, it does a lot of... It, it must be really straining for Samus to go through, like, going Mach 2 on a giant power suit. Well, in the gravity suit's case, but you know what I mean. But yeah, uh, let's see. Who are my who is my favorite Legend of Zelda characters? Hmm. I don't really play a lot of Zelda, but um, yeah. So I I don't really know a lot about the Zelda characters. I've only played like a handful of the games in the Zelda series. Like I've only played like through the original Zelda game. Uh, I played Link to the Past. I've played um, Ocarina of Time and Majora's Mask on the GameCube. Um. And I also played Wind Waker when I was in high school with my friend, who was a massive um, Zelda fan. So yeah, I can't really say like who my favorite is, because I don't really know a lot about them. Oh, I need to shoot through there. Uh, okay, I'll get there later. Let's see. Uh, not a lot of people remember Nickelodeon's origins. Yeah, that is true. Uh, very few people seem to know about it. The only people who do know about it are, like, um, people who are, uh, either, like, Nickelodeon, his like, pop culture historians, or people who are willing to do, like, oh, hold on. Like, documentaries on it, like, you know, obviously the Orange Years and, like, Slimed. And, you know, people like Pepsi Sue Clay, who does the classic Nickelodeon fan blog, she also, you know, knows about Nickelodeon's origins, talking about, like, 70s and 80s Nickelodeon shows. So, yeah. Um, but then again, you know, some people are not interested about origins of things. They just see the thing and they're just interested in it. But that's okay, though. I mean, if you're not if you're not interested in that kind of stuff, or if you are, there's plenty of ways to do research online. Definitely a lot more, you know, than what I did when I wanted to do the Nickelodeon retrospective many years ago. I was so limited. Like I didn't have a lot of, you know, um, ways to watch Pinwheel. Like there was like maybe like one clip of it online, and now there's like six-hour marathons of Pinwheel that you can watch. Which is fantastic, because th that wasn't available five years ago when I tried to do the Nickelodeon tribute. Am I a fan of science fiction? There's some things about science fiction that I do like. I'm not like a crazy massive fan of it, but I do respect it. I, I do like it a little bit. I mean, I do like watching Star Trek with my dad, and I do like some of the Star Wars movies. Um, and I do like some TV shows about sci-fi. I'm just... Not a massive fan, but I do like it. In fact, um, one of my favorite shows that is kind of like sci-fi meets a western Cowboy Bebop. I <clears throat> I love that show. I definitely want to do a Cowboy Bebop podcast uh, when the show celebrates its 20th anniversary this fall. Okay, Shadow the Hedgehog or Sonic... 2006. Uh, oh boy. Really? I, 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 it's like choosing between, it's like choosing between, you know, uh, I don't know, I mean, which one, I, I guess, I guess Shadow, because I remember when I first played Sonic many years ago, like, it was, I remember when I first played the game, I was like, I rented it, actually. And it was, like, one of my biggest regrets. 
Ugh, I, I, I don't even want to talk about it. And as for Shadow, it's like... Ugh, it's... It was interesting ideas. I mean, it tried to branch out with like a many uh, a bunch of storylines, but it was just like... Uh, not, not too crazy about it. Okay. We're back in Brinstar. This is like the area where we first started in the game when we got the Morph Ball. But now we have some more stuff to collect, which is what I always love doing. I always looking around items... You know, finding items to collect. I mean, even though that I was not a big fan of it in Fusion, but with Super Metroid, I have so much fun doing it. Not so much with Fusion. As you saw with my collection rate being like 28%, but... No, with Super Metroid, I always have a lot of fun collecting items. There's even some uh, items that I don't even know about, but I, I never like looking at maps or walkthroughs unless I'm really, really lost. Favorite candy. Ooh, mmm, a candy. Uh, my favorite candy as of right now is like, right as of right now, um, peanut butter Snickers. That stuff is delicious. That stuff is like, oh, I, I love that stuff. And, uh, let's see. No, there we go. Uh, peanut butter Snickers and Take Five. That's like my favorite. And that's like my favorite candy right now. I just love that stuff so much. And of, of course, you know, like I like Twix and I like Reese's pe peanut butter cups and stuff like that. But those two right there are like my favorite candy right now. And uh, like as for like, uh, let's see, Nerds candy. I also love Nerds candy. Nerds candy is delicious. And um, let's see what else. Uh, sweet tarts. Sweet tarts are- uh, I love sweet tarts as well. Those were like my favorite candies as a kid. Love sweet tarts. Um, let me see if I can think of anything else. Uh, bubble gum, um, I guess it depends on the what, what kind of bubble gum. Not like the, um, not the you know the double bubble like the the really hard ones that the flavor gets lost in like three seconds like nah not not really much of those even though that there, for some reason as a kid there was there, it was available a lot but you know that um there also like the 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 gum that was like um that was like the the the, the foot long gum we I used to see that a lot when I was a kid and I also saw like um. You know, the, the, the gum that was like, it was in band-aids or something like that. Like the stripe gum, I also remember that too. Um, that's the ones I can think of. Okay, my favorite cereal. Um, I think I've answered this as a kid, but nowadays I don't really eat cereal as much anymore. I mean, the only cereal that I do eat is like, you know, honey bunches of oats or... Like, you know, something like that to be a little bit more healthier. But nowadays I have things like, you know, toast with jam or um, granola with um, yogurt to be a lot healthier. But as a kid, my favorite cereals were like, um, like Oreo O's and uh, Waffle Crisp and um, Golden Grahams. That stuff, that stuff was delicious. Um, and let's see. Um, and also, you know, uh, another thing that I also liked was, um, let's see what else. I mean, I, I, I mean, I like the, um, I like Cocoa Puffs as well. I mean, uh, there was like a debate on about which cereal was the chocolatiest. It's like Cocoa Puffs or Cocoa Pebbles. I always felt that Cocoa Pebbles was not as chocolatey, chocolatey as Cocoa Puffs. So I, I, I liked po Cocoa Puffs as when the Reese's Puffs came out. Oh man, I was, I just love that so much. Oh, that was so delicious. Okay. Hey, everyone, welcome back. Uh, you're watching me on your big living room TV. That's awesome. <laughs> That's awesome. That's, that's great, everyone. Thank you. Okay, I totally regret getting Sonic for Christmas, or not Christmas, the holiday season when it first came out. Oh, Joshua, I'm so sorry. Oh, that sucked. 
It's kind of funny because I received a comment from somebody the other day saying about when they were watching my top 10 Ren and Stimpy episodes, there was actually a story that they they had about like they bought um you know, uh, you know the episode Fire Dogs? There was a video game based off of Fire Dogs. And they actually bought the game based off of it. And he says it's like one of his biggest regrets because that game was like $70 when it first came out. And there was no internet and no walkthroughs about the game. So it, it, it was kind of like he was stuck with it. And it's like, man, that's I'm so sorry, man. That sucked. Ah. <sighs> One of my favorite things about Meridia is just how soothing it is. It's so calm. It's so serene, especially, you know, you're completely underwater. So it just, it takes you, it takes time to relax. I mean, it makes a lot of sense because we went through, like, Norfair, which is filled with lava. But now you have something as relaxing as uh, Meridia, which is nice and relaxing. One of my favorite places to go in video games where you just care about just enjoying the atmosphere. Oh wait, I'm not supposed to go here yet. Yes, I do know that uh, Oreo O's is in South Korea. I'm well aware of that. I think I even answered this in the uh, the last live stream I did where somebody asked me this question. But they don't have it in my supermarkets. So yeah, it sucks. I'm not willing to visit South Korea just to pick up some cereal. So, I'm sorry. Okay, have I seen gem reviews? Um, my friend Creepy has been reviewing the gem retro- uh, the gem episodes, if that's what you're referring to. Uh, the gem and the holograms TV series. So, if, um, if that's what you're referring to, then yes, I have been seeing my friend Creepy's discussions on the gem episodes. And they're pretty humorous, especially seeing, you know, Chibi Thulu acting crazy about, like, you know, stop talking about gem! So, yeah, it's, it's pretty funny. Okay. Let's see. Who are. Uh, do you watch Zaren Zarek? I've never heard of that, so no, I'm sorry. It's sad that they don't have Waffle Crisp anymore. That's my favorite cereal of all time. Yeah, I'm really sad, too. I mean, you know, I remember when I was a kid and they had that cereal. It was just... I mean, that cereal was just so delicious. It was just basically maple syrup goodness, and they don't even have it anymore. It's really sad. Ah! Okay, get up. There we go. Okay. Oh, no. Uh, Gem Reviews is an animation critic. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. Then no, I've never heard of Gem Reviews, I'm sorry. I thought you were for referring to, um, you know, Creepy Guy's Gem Reviews. So, yeah. Sorry, I guess I got that confused. Okay. Uh, what is the worst movie in your opinion? Worst movie, huh? Uh, I think I did mention this, that Mano's in the Hands of Fate. I remember when I first saw that movie, I just considered it to be so unwatchable. I could only watch the Mystery Science Theater version because that movie is just so bad. The, 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 everything about that movie is just awful. Like, you know, the production, the acting, just even the behind the scenes story was just a disaster, so... Yeah, not a good movie. I don't think I'm supposed to go here either. But yeah, the only, the only way I was able to watch it, like, you know, I, I can watch it without cringing myself is watching the, um, the Mystery Science Theater 3000 version. 
But if you're war I mean, even, like, more recently, like... I think they even did Manos in the Hands of Fate in, like, their last, um, live stream. You know, like, every Thanksgiving they would do, like, a live stream of Mystery Science Theater episodes, and I think w that was one of the episodes, I believe? If I can recall on it. It's been... I, I, I mean, sometimes I don't even remember what happened, you know, last year or stuff like that, so... Yeah, I, I think that maybe that was one of the episodes, if I can recall. Okay, it's this way. Going up. Okay. Have I seen 100 Things to Do Before High School on Nickelodeon? Um, I think that was the, um, the show that Scott Fellows created that was very, very similar to Ned's Declassified. I have heard some things about it, but... Uh, I wasn't in, like, a massive rush to watch it, you know what I'm saying? I mean, I, maybe I do have to watch it at some point to do a comparison, but as of right now, no, I haven't seen it yet. Some people like it, and some people think it's just a shameless ripoff. So yeah, I'd love to know your thoughts about it. I think Food Fight is the worst. What a waste of 65 million. I've never seen Food Fight, so yeah, I'm sorry. I, I cannot tell you about Food Fight. Thoughts about Garfield and Friends. I love that show. Yeah, I remember when I saw that as a kid, I, I watched Garfield and Friends. Uh, Kevin and I, we used to talk about Garfield and Friends as kids as well. In fact, every time it was my birthday, he would sing this, the, the Binky the Clown song. Uh, it got annoying. But yeah, I, I, I do like that show. Okay, there you are. Come on, get up. Oh, wow, I can't get up there. Garfield and Friends was pretty good. It was on CITV here in the UK. Awesome. That's cool, I don't know. Oh, I get it. Do I have to do a shine spark? No, I can't. I don't have enough space. Oh, there we go. Yes, I do agree, Code Box 42. That and Manos in the hand Manos in the Hands of Fate was just awful. Some people say that Plan 9 from Outer Space was the worst movie ever made, but seriously, Manos in the Hands of Fate was even worse. At least with Plan 9, at least Ed Wood had a passion to do that movie. He legitimately saw it as like a masterpiece, and it was just in unintentionally bad, but no, I mean, Manos in the Hands of Fate was just awful throughout. Just everything about the movie was terrible. Let's see, I think it's a modern rip-o-off. Modern rip-off? Um, hmm. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, we go back up there. Yeah, the acting, oh my god, the acting in Manos in the Hands of Fate is- Oh, Jesus. Ugh. Like I said, that movie is unwatchable to me. The only way I can watch it and have myself a good time is if I see the Mystery Science Theater 3000 version. I cannot see that episode or that movie in any other way. So 
Seriously, that, that it just sucked. It sucked so bad. Anyway, so, um, while I'm on the subject, I probably will, as soon as I'm done finding the, uh, the plasma beam, I'll definitely want to call off the live stream and then work on it some other time, because, um, I want to start prepping up my stuff for Father's Day, because it's coming up tomorrow. And, uh, I do have, uh, some plans for Father's Day. Don't want to, um, you know, stay in the live stream for too long, of course. So yeah, I just um, just want to mention uh, in general about how um, you know it, um, I actually um, recently saw the um, what you call it. I actually saw a few episodes of various Nicktoons discussing about dads because uh, you know the Splat has been posting them on like their social media pages. Yeah, I'd love to know from all of you guys in the chat, who is your favorite Nicktoon or Nickelodeon dad? Uh, I did a list of my top five dads, like, many years ago, but I definitely want to remake it because, um... I think there were some choices that I thought what I would have done that would have been a lot better. But yeah, I mean, I, I chose Uncle Iroh as number one, and that was not a really good choice. I mean, I, I chose him as a father figure for Zuko, but I should have chose, like, a legitimate dad. So that's why I want to really redo the list. And there's been more shows since my last, um, when I last posted it, so I get to do more... <laughs> oh, that's funny. I want to I wanna see if I can redo that list again. Ah, missed. Hold on. Ah, it just froze on me. Okay. Oh, it's my phone. That's what it is. Alright, I'm just gonna pull it out. I think it's charged enough. There we go. I'm lucky I've never saw Food Fight before. It has... Animation in the world. I think you're referring to, like, the worst animation in the world. And if it does, then I'm not interested in watching it. Like I said before, um, I've never seen it. And from the sounds of everybody saying how, how awful it is, I have no interest in seeing it. Ah, oh, I missed. So close. Okay. Uh, Stu Pickles. Okay, yeah, Stu Pickles is definitely a great choice. I think I had him as number two. Uh, yeah, really excellent choice, uh, you know. Um, yeah, he's not like your typical dad. I mean, you know, you know, doing a, a bunch of inventions and- but he- he do you can definitely tell he does care for his kids. Definitely a lot better than Drew, that's for sure. I think- I think I even listed Drew as, like, one of the worst dads, because, you know, his, um, you know, constantly spoiling Angelica has turned her into the character that she is, and a combination of Charlotte not being around because of her constantly working, it, I mean, it just ruined Angelica as a character. And, you know, I, I mean, it's even- I think it's even referenced in the episode when Angelica wants to try, um, the makeup as the vanishing cream and thinking that it can turn her invisible. Even Drew admits that he's a, da a terrible dad. I mean, how many dads do you know in which they have to call their kids for a SWAT team because of a temper tantrum? Seriously. I 
mean, that's rough stuff, man. I'm ready to head get out. It's great talking to you. See you later. Okay, see you later, Arjun. Thank you so much for joining in the chat. I can't think of Nickelodeon Dad. I really like Greg from Steven Universe. He's my favorite Cartoon Network dad. Um, the runner-up would be Professor Adamesium from the original Powerpuff Girls. I, th I think it's Professor Utonium, if you're if that's what you're referring to. And yeah, Professor T Utonium and Greg are great dads. Yeah, N nice choices there, um, Joshua. Um, no, uh, yes, they they do reference the SWAT team. It's like, you know when the, um, the, the parents take the quiz about, like, you know, 50 ways and how to tell that your child is a spoiled brat? And one of the questions was, have you ever called the SWAT team because of a child's temper tantrum? And I think he even answered it. Because, um, when Chaz checks on the answers, it's like, how many did you get, Drew? And then he said, like, 49, and then Drew said, actually, it's 49 and a half. So, yeah. Apparently, at one point, Drew had to call the SWAT team because Angelica was having a really nasty temper tantrum. It was either the police or the SWAT team, I don't remember. But yeah, that actually did happen in, you know, as a, a, in context with that episode, which is- Oh my god, that's so insane. Okay, yeah, a lot of people are saying Stu from Rugrats is their favorite. Yeah, I def I mean, yeah, definitely when I when I did that list, Stu was number two on my list. So yeah, Stu, I think in my opinion, is a great Nickelodeon dad. As for live action, um, let's see, I think it was probably, uh, I think it was definitely Dawn from Pete and Pete was my favorite Nickelodeon dad. But yeah, live, I think animated, maybe, yeah, I think Stu is a really great dad. You can definitely, de you can definitely tell that he cares for his kids. What about Chucky's dad? Yeah, Chucky's dad is also a really cool dad, too. Definitely really caring for Chucky. Yeah, he, he's a good dad as well. Dee Dee disciplined Angelica more than Drew, considering Dee Dee was the only one who saw through her spoiled tricks. Even Stu was a better parent to Angelica than Drew. Yeah, definitely. I mean, every time that, um, you know, Angelica was causing a whole bunch of trouble, we definitely saw that, um, you know, Dee Dee and Stu were the ones who disciplined her. So yeah, I definitely do agree. Okay, I'm gonna try going up here. Yeah, I wanna I wanna try going up there to see if I can get anything. There we go. Oh uh, let's see. Live action dads, Mr. Rockmore from Keenan and Kel. Oh, that's a great choice. Really nice choice, Dipper. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I mean, I just like the fact that he's just so serious and, and goofy at the same time. Yeah, he's a, he's a fun dad as well. Oh, uh, actually, Angelica, uh, Stu spoiled Angelica too. He went out at three in the morning to get chocolate pudding mix. Well, I think it wasn't so much that he did it because he. It was more because he didn't have a choice. It, you know, he she was constantly like crying, saying, "Oh, oh, the pain in my leg, help me." At least he said no, as opposed to like Drew, who said like. Oh, uh, of course I would get that for you, Pumpkin. At, at least, you know, he said no. He was kind of forced into it. So I can give the defense for, you know, Stu in that episode. Anyway, I'm going to try to see if I can get back up there.
Oh, I can't get up there. Okay. Okay, I want to get back up there. Alright then. Ah, oh, made, made it too late. There we go. Let's see. So yeah, that's why I would say that case in which I would defend Stu as opposed to, like, Drew. Because, you know, he had to get the chocolate pudding in his, uh, you know, against his will. Really? Really? This thing blocked me? Arrgh! There we go. Okay, so... Oh no! Mock droids! Ah! <laughs> yeah, this is the mock droids. This is, um, with the space pirates doing their experiments on the Metroids, and it didn't turn out well. So yeah, that's why they look really different than the regular Metroids. Dead. Okay, the dad from Caitlin's Way. Oh, the dad? Really? Or you're not referring to the uncle, right? Because the dad from Caitlin's Way, we didn't see him until much later on in the series. And yes, he is very understandable, I do have to admit, but he wasn't, um... He didn't show up that much in this series. If you're referring to the uncle, then yeah, he, he did have some really good moments. But uh, if you're referring to Caitlyn's dad, then yeah, I, I can see where you're coming from on that. through there, huh? Okay. Bye, I'm gonna go take a shower. Okay, I'll see you later early. Yeah, I think that, um, for the most part with, um, Nicktoon dads, um, yeah, you, you, there have only been a handful of them that really stood out to me. Like, you know, there's obviously Stu from Rugrats, and, um, you know, the, a lot of the live-action dads, like, um... Okay, there we go. There we go, that's how you do it. Uh, let's see. Yeah, like, for example, Clarissa's dad is really goofy. Okay, boss time. Ah. There we go. The only way you could hit it is through the head. It's almost dead anyway. There we go. Okay, bye. I'm going swimming. It's really hot where I live. Alright, have fun, Joshua. Yeah, it's, it's actually really hot over here, too. It's like 92 degrees outside. It is hot. 
Last week, it was nothing but rain. Like, nothing but rain. But, yeah, nowadays, it's just... Okay, there we go. I want to try to see if I can get that E-Tank. Ah! Oh, get it. Ah, oh, get up there. Get up there. Yeah, I don't want to fall down there, because if I fall down there, then that means I have to go all the way back up. I am not planning on doing that. Let me just save right here, just in case. But yeah, um, last week, it was just nothing but rain. Nothing but rain. And last night, we also had a lot of rain as well. So yeah, um, I feel you, Joshua. So yeah, have fun swimming. The uncle. Okay, that's what you're referring to, Nasaya. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, the uncle from Caitlin's Way was also really good. I have a theory about Helga and Angelica being related. What do you think? I think... I believe that Frederator might have done something similar to that, in which they're talking about, like, how Angelica and Helga act very similar. So maybe they're either related or maybe they're the same person in a different universe. Uh, my friends from the Friday Night Nicktoons podcast even did something similar in which they, um, they actually discussed about, like, Helga versus Angelica, like, you know, which character, ah, uh, which character is superior, like, which character is the most relatable. And they talked about Helga. They did two episodes about Helga and... No, they did an episode about Helga and they did an episode about Angelica. If any of you guys are interested in checking it out, it's on the Friday Night Nick Kids podcast. Ah, I did that again. Okay, let's see if I can get here. Nope. Okay, so yeah, I, I've heard something similar about that. Um, about whether Helga and Angelica were related, so... I mean, I wouldn't be surprised, you know, because... Uh, you know, if somebody were able to come up with an elaborate theory about Angelica and Helga... I mean, I know that, um, you know, Craig Bartlett was the one who... I believe he was the one who designed Cynthia... Or at least, there we go, that's how you do it. Or at, at least, you know, partially, you know, was the, uh, helped uh, design Cynthia. Because he did the Graham, he wrote the Graham Canyon episode. And he also wrote the Seven Voyages of Cynthia. So, yeah, he did have some stay in helping with, um, this developing Angelica as a character. Nah. Take that, Mactroid. Nah. So yeah, um, I would love to know, Nasaya, if you could- I mean, I don't- I'd love to know about how your theory is about how Angelica and- and, uh, Helga are related in some way. So please, um, if you ever have the chance, please let me know how that turns out. say that Angelica is the worst cartoon brat? No. I think that there was a lot of other bratty characters out there. At least there are some moments in which you can feel genuinely sorry for Angelica. But no, I don't think she's like the worst brat ever. I think there are other characters out there that they try to act really bratty, but there's nothing redeemable about them. So yeah, I wouldn't say that Angelica's the worst. 
I think there have been plenty worse out there. I can't think of one at the moment, but I think there have been, like, a lot of other bratty characters. But yeah, if you can think of any other characters, then please let me know through that chat. I'd love to know from your guys' opinions. Vortex is also similar. Yeah, uh, if, if, if Angelica was a lot smarter, then yeah, I, I can definitely see that as well. Ugh, really close. Yeah, it's kind of funny. Helga, Angelica, and Cindy, they all have blonde hair, and they're very, very, um, you know, they're very, you know, um, you know, really angry towards the main protagonist. I wonder what the deal about that is. At least it's better than the dumb blonde, that's for sure. Ah, finally, a place to save. The character from Arnold's dream in Arnold visits Arnie could be real and be related to Arnold's classmates. Well, that was a dream, so I think that... N I don't think that necessarily happened, but... I mean, you know, who knows at this point? I mean, it, it, it could be the case, but I think that was all a dream. I don't think that that actually could happen. I mean, I'm not gonna wake up and all of a sudden I see somebody who looks exactly like me that acts something completely different from me, so... Yeah. I don't know if anything like that could happen. is one of the most infamous Mary Sue's, I think. Yeah, she is... Oh, jeez. I, I really... I You know, I never liked Lila. I never really liked her. I don't know. what I don't know what it is about Lila that a lot of people seem to relate with, but I just never really got into her. Supposed to be a room here, I think. There we go. There you are. A princess from the Powerpuff Girls. Ooh, good example. Excellent example. Except that, um, come on, open it up. Yeah, I definitely want to get- I want to- okay, I definitely want to beat it via the grapple hook, because that's my favorite thing to do. I know that's the easy thing to do, but come on. Seeing- <laughs> seeing the character just being electrocuted is just so freaking awesome. Okay, here we go. Come on, drag me in. Drag me in. Come on, you can do it. A little bit higher. Come on. Ah, oh, come on. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. Ah, oh, so easy, but so awesome. Uh, yeah, who would you say are related big brother or big sister characters in cartoons? Ooh, that's a great question. Um, uh, let's see. I, I mean, you know... Um, let's see. Ah, uh, there we go. Space jump. 
Um, like, more recently, like, the more recent cartoons, I, that I definitely think that I've seen, like, great brother and sister dynamics, like, uh, you know, Phineas and Ferb and Dipper and Maple from Gravity Falls. I think they're definitely really, I just love their interactions. It's not like, oh, I'm gonna be really annoying to you, and, you know, I'm gonna ruin everything and blah 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 and stuff like that. So, I really like, you know, the more recent dynamics. Check. No? Okay, I think we're done here. I think the only thing I need to get is, um... I definitely need to get the plasma beam and the wave beam. Okay, up there. Uh, what do I think of the Rugrats special, Vacation? It's one of my f one of my favorite specials. Um, I haven't seen it in a while, but from what I remember, I thought it was a pretty good special. You know, definitely a lot of fun. It's not every day that you get to see the Rugrats go on vacation like that. So, yeah, I, I actually did like it. Um, and I do remember when James and I did the Rugrats podcast that it was like one of... Um, when they were voting on Nick.com about what their favorite episodes were, that was one of them. So... From what I remember, I thought- I remember that was a pretty decent episode. But yeah, I- um... Oh, hold on. There we go. Uh, but yeah, from what I recall, um, Big Brother and Big Sister episodes, um... Uh, I also like the- the big- I also like the, um... Let's see. I, I love Tina from Bob's Burgers. She's just so funny. She's uh, she's hysterical. Oh, and I oh and uh, Louise. She's so I, I know it's just basically Kristen Shawl, but come on, she's that, that, that she just does a really awesome job as the character. I I just love Bob's Burgers in general. My sister and I, whenever there was new episodes airing, we would just watch Bob's Burgers. kill it. Alright, instead of you, you didn't die. But now you're dead. Okay, let's see if there's any other questions. But yeah, um, let's see if I have anything else to talk about. Um, yeah, so right now, as of for Old School Lane, I'm still working on, um, the Secret Hey Arnold project. Uh, I can tell you another thing. Um, part two of the St. Elseworlds month will be coming out at the end of the month. I finally got the things that I needed to um, take care of regarding about um, some certain things that I wanted to do. Uh, like, there was a certain cameo that I wanted to get a hold of, and they uh, that, that this person was really, really busy, but this person finally got a hold of me, and they were able to send in their, um, you know, their, their cameo audio, so I'm really excited about that. Can't say who it is yet, but, um, I'm really excited, uh, to show you guys, uh, who I got a hold of, and, um, I hope that you guys really enjoy it, because it's, sadly, um, the St. Elseworlds Month video didn't do very well on my viewpoints. I think only maybe, like, it only got like 200 views, and I'm hoping that, um, you know, I, I'm hoping that, you know, um, you know, the next one will get a little bit more views, because I, I'm, I'm working really hard on it. Okay, there it is. There's the plasma beam. Perfect. Let me 
just double check on Samus for just a quick second. Oh, the spacer beams. Oh, okay. Okay, so I need to. Okay, so I need the plasma beam for sure. Yeah, I definitely want to find the wave beam when I have the chance. Uh, I think I need to kill one more. Okay, a few more. There we go, now the door's open. Yeah, for some reason the space jump just... I, I feel like the, the space jump in later games are much more responsive. Um, let's see. Thoughts? Uh, would Courtney Crippling be one of your favorite popular girl characters in cartoons? Absolutely. Absolutely. Courtney Crippling is one of my favorite popular girl characters because she's not your stereotypical popular girl character. She's actually really interested about what life is in the middle class. So, yeah, I definitely do respect her for that. Yeah, she's one of my- uh, I mean, Courtney's one of my favorite characters. I mean, I know we kind of brag- uh, I know we kind of bring her down a lot when we do her in between, but, you know, that's because she just- she, she just overreacts so much for the pettiest of things. It's just ridiculous, but, yeah, Courtney's one of my favorite characters. I'll definitely do a list on who my favorite characters of I Told by Ginger are in where in between. Definitely a lot later down in the line. Um, yeah, let me know in the in the chat who are your favorite as told by Ginger characters. I already told you my favorite is Lois. But yeah, I would love to know from you guys. Who are your favorites? Ugh. The one thing I don't like is this, the, the inconsistencies of this space jump. And the fact that little tiny things can easily destroy you. I definitely need to get the score attack, but that's not until after I defeat Ridley. Uh, let's see. Some people say that she gets treated badly in the third season, especially with Battle of the Band. Oh, yeah, definitely. You are correct, Codebox42, but I'm not going to say too much into that because just in case if... Ah! Hold on. You know what? There we go. There! Take that! That! Ugh. Yeah, I definitely do agree that she does not get good treatment in that episode, but I don't want to say anything about it because just in case if anybody from the Where you know, anybody who listens to the Where in Between podcast and are they have not seen the entire series, I don't want to spoil it for them. So I'm not going to say anything other than that. Oh, okay. Never mind. I have to help him. Okay, hold on. There we go. Okay, robot companion. Clear the sand away. Let's see. Norbert from the Angry Beavers. He's a really cool brother. Oh, that's another one. Great, great one, Nasaya. Absolutely. Yeah, there, there's, that's another great um, brother dynamic. I, I definitely do agree. Definitely a lot better than Cat for, from Cat Dog. In which I just never really bought into their brother dynamic. Uh, Courtney, Lois, Macy, and Carl are my favorite characters. Oh, great choices, Codebox. Absolutely. Love Courtney. Uh, Lois is my favorite. Love Macy. Carl's one of my favorites. Yeah, great, ch great choices. Absolutely. There we go.
Okay. Yay, I got the spring ball, even though I don't really use it as much, but hey, I got it. So I don't need to use this anymore, I can just bounce. Whee. Anyway, so yeah, um... Yeah, those are my favorite characters as well, Code Box 42. Uh, really enjoyed those characters as well. Uh, there are some other characters that I really do love as well, but I don't want to say for the sake of spoilers. There's another character who appears later on that I really love. But that's much later on in the discussion. I think Cat from Cat Dog gets treated so poorly in the show, and his grump attitude comes from the torment he gets. I think Cat's treatment is the worst thing about the show, aside from being bland. Yeah, but also Cat is not like the, you know, he's not the best character either. He does, you know, he does try to take advantage on Dog a lot. So it's like, you know, he gets poor treatment, but at the same time, he kind of deserves it because he treats Dog pretty badly, so... Yeah, it's kind of like a lose-lose situation for the character. It's kind of hard to feel bad for him when he's already taken advantage of, you know, Dog in many, many ways. Which is why I don't really care too much about Cat Dog. I mean, I know a lot of people... There's some people who actually really disagree with me on that, saying that they love Cat Dog, but yeah, I'm, I'm just, I just don't really care about it. I never really did, to be quite honest. But, you know, if they if they have an opinion on that, then that's perfectly fine. Uh, my phone is dying again. I just need to give it another quick charge. Uh, Dog does the same with Cat as well. Yeah, that is true. He does do the same for him as well. Uh, but, yeah, I, I, I see it apparent with, um, with Dog being treated, um, you know, um, you know, taken advantage of slightly more than Cat. But yeah, that, that doesn't mean that Dog is a perfect character either. Oh, that's right, I need to get the, the wave beam to go through here. I think Cat can be mean-spirited towards Dog, in my opinion. Yeah. Absolutely. Okay, there's- oh yeah, there's- there's some rooms that I missed out on. I wanna see if I can reach at least a few of them right before I head back up to Criteria, because... I wanna be able to, um... Explore some more areas in Criteria right before I head over to fight Ridley. Because that's where I have to go to next. Okay, that, I mean, that's the way to Brinstar. I don't want to go there just yet. Yeah, I, I need to head back to um, Meridia to explore some more areas. There we go. Um, out of a show with a family di uh, dog is more mean-spirited towards Cat, in my opinion, especially in the episode, Dummy Dummy, and Remain Seated. Out of a show with a family dynamic, which is your fe least favorite tropes that come with it? My least favorite tropes that come with it are... Let's see. The, the stereotypical dumb dad. I, I really hate that. And, um... Let's see. Uh, for some reason, I just can't get up there, so... 
Okay, I think I have no other choice. I think I do have to go over to Brimstar. Unless I can try to get myself up there. No? Okay. Alright, I'm gonna be heading out then. But yeah, the dumb dad, I can't really stand it, uh, the misunderstanding thing, um, the, the, um, you know, the ditzy sister, like, oh, you know, like, oh, I just like boys and stuff like that. Not, not really too crazy about that either. I think a, I, I think a girl can be much more than just that. Okay, there we go. Yeah, now I can get back to Maria this way. Um, do I need to go down? No, I'm not gonna go to Norfair just yet. I still need to get a few things from Meridia, so I'll just be continuing to go back through here. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, um, uh, let's see what else. I, I just don't like it. I just don't like the- I, there, A lot of things with family shows is that a lot of them just play off very similar. I just want to see something, like, really unique, or if it's not unique, then being played off in a different sort of way. As opposed to, like, really sticking to the stereotypical tropes, unless it's willing to make fun of itself. But, yeah, um, that's one of my least favorite things about that kind of stuff. It's like the dumb dad. I just really hate the dumb dad, which is probably why I hate Walter from Drake and Josh. So that, that's that's probably the answer to my question, code box for you too. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I definitely want to go uh, through that hall because I know I haven't explored that part yet. Okay, favorite adult cartoons. Um, my favorite adult cartoons are, um... Let's see... Um, let's see, I like... Mm, there's... Try going down here. Uh, the Oblongs and, um... Family movies, uh, Robot Chicken, let's see, uh, let's see, um, Kevin and I, w when I was over in Kevin's place a few years ago, he had, like, season one of Aqua Teen Hunger Force, and that was really, really hilarious. Um, there were some episodes that I didn't really care about, but watching a majority of the episodes, that was a lot of fun to watch. Uh, let's see what else. Whee! There we go. Got the E-Tank. Uh, do I remember Crisis in the Love Zone? I think I do, yes. It's been a while, but I think I do remember it, yes. The Nerdy and Cool Kid Siblings. Yeah, th uh, that's also... Um, yeah, th that's also ones that I really can't say. Unless they're played off very well. I mean, unless you have, like, a... Um, Unless you have, like, a cool kid that- or a nerdy kid that's a little bit different, I don't mind that, but if it's played off very stereotypically, then I can't stand that either. I mean, I just want something to- I just want to see something a little bit more different, you know? I'm sure a lot of people would want to see something different as well. A different take on it.
Okay. There we go. Okay, I want to start heading up there now. But yeah, those are those are also my least favorites. So uh, yeah, those are those are good examples, Marlena. So yeah, if you guys have any other questions for me to ask, uh, then please let me know throughout the chat. I'll probably be here for another few hours. I just want to explore some more of the area right before I head over to Norfair and to take down Ridley. Because all I need to do is just take down Ridley and I would have already defeated the four bosses I needed in order for me to continue on with uh, defeating Mother Brain. What's up, I see Mr. Mario 2. Um, hey, Patricia just joined right now. I'm rewatching the whole live stream since I had things to do. That's fine. That's not a problem at all. I'm glad that you can be able to join us. I love genius characters with more rounded areas. I don't like the genius stereotypes at the same time. I get what you're saying, Codebox42. Like, genius characters can be worked out well, but then at the same time, they can just be like... Oh, uh, you know, it, if you take the equation of this thing and you multiply it by this thing, then you get the equivalent of this. I, I, how can you not know that? Are you, like, stupid? <laughs> it's like, nah, I, that, that's just pushing it way too far, you know? You know, just making the... It, it just basically emphasizes on how dumb the other characters are. I mean, it just makes you... It's just pushing it a little bit too far, you know what I'm saying? Okay, so yeah, I get what you're saying, Codebox42. I mean, it, it's basically the same thing with any stereotype. It can be done well, but at the same time, if you don't write it correctly, then it can just turn out to be really, really bad. Have I seen the little baby's ice cream commercial? No, I have not. I don't even know what that is. So yeah, sorry. Haven't seen it. Hmm. Alright. I want to start heading down now. Even though I was never into the Metroid series, I was surprised about Metroid 4 when it was announced. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, absolutely. It was pretty awesome when it was announced. I cannot wait to see what they're gonna do for Metroid F Prime 4. Really excited. I'm, I mean, I'm genuinely excited about it. Okay. Hey, face kid, what's up? There we go. So yeah, if you guys have any questions, then please let me know throughout the chat. Really would love to know. But yeah, I'm really excited about Metroid Prime 4, absolutely. I don't know what they're going to do with it, but I'm just genuinely curious.
I don't think there's anything here as far as I know. But... Yeah, I definitely want to go up there. You like my Harold videos. Thank you very much. Really do appreciate it. Yeah, um, which one has been your favorite so far? I'm, I'm genuinely curious to know. Uh, I put in a lot of work into those Hey Arnold videos. I'm currently working on one right now. I'm working on a secret Hey Arnold project. I can't really say too much about what it is. But it's coming along really nicely. Let's see, uh, I saw it in the last Nostalgia Critic Commercial Review video, that commercial's creepy. Oh! Oh, it's one of those Nostalgia Critic Commercial- Oh, okay. If that's the case, then no, I have not seen it. So yeah, sorry. I'm curious, actually. Uh, the top 20 episodes. Oh, okay, yeah. Thank you so much for liking it. Speaking of which, I recently had a copyright strike on my top 20 Hey Arnold episodes a few days ago by Viacom. But, you know, thanks to uh, me saying that I did it under fair use, they were able to uh, remove that copyright strike, which is like, oh, thank you. That's so great. I really am appreciative of that. Because that's the last thing I need right now is a copyright strike. I already have a copyright strike with my From Pilot to Final Product on on the Fairly Odd Parent, so I don't need another one. So yeah, um, I'm really glad that you liked it. Thank you so much, Face Video. Alright. Yeah, I definitely want to go over to that room, because I wasn't there before. Yeah, um, I would love to know from everybody. Let me know when you're in the co in the chat about what have been your top ten or top twenty favorite episodes of Hey Arnold. I'm actually genuinely curious. I always love to know what other people's favorite episodes are. I can't go down there, huh? <sighs> well, alright then. I guess I can just explore Meridia later. I just want to really c complete the game and just defeat on Ridley. Yeah, I'm just gonna... I think I'm just gonna head out Meridia for now. particular order. S top five since messages limited. Uh, downtown is fruits, stuck in a tree, little pink book, the journal slash parents day, and the Christmas special. Okay, great choices, I see Mr. Mario 3. Now that's one of the good things about like discussing about like favorite episodes of anything. Everybody seems to have like a different, you know, they have like a different choice about what their favorite episodes are, which, you know, with Hey Arnold, it's, v it's varied. Like, I, um, you know, for a lot of, uh, lists, 
that people share with me, it's like it's never the same one, you know? It's always something completely different. Uh, do you ever plan on making a video on My Life as a Teenage Robot? Yeah, I might. Yeah, absolutely. I might do a video on My Life as a Teenage Robot. As for what I want to do, I... I wouldn't know as of yet. I have to definitely think about it. Okay, there we go. There's the other room that I was looking for. Helga on the couch and the journal are up there. Oh, great choices. But yeah, I def if I want to do a video on my life as a teenager, but I definitely have to do something different about it. I don't know. I don't know how I will do a, a video on it that's different. I don't. I don't want to do a typical review. Maybe if I wanted, if I ever do a review, I may want to do a review on maybe the TV movie because I don't see a lot of people talking about that. But yeah, I definitely want to do something different. But yeah, I I I, I do want to. I do want to do one on the uh, teenage robot. I just don't know <gasps> in what aspect. Maybe kind of like how teenage robot. Um, I mean, teenage robot was the the first um, Nicktoon that uh, that had a female protagonist that was action based. I can probably do that. So, I mean, you know, it was like, you know, you know, kind of like, or, or maybe I can do one that's like. Ugh. Okay. Maybe how well it homages the 1960s with its animation? I could probably do that as well. There's a lot of ideas. Okay. There we go. Okay. Definitely back around criteria. Okay, yeah, I needed to take a break from Meridia. Even if I haven't found everything, it's okay. Wasn't planning on doing like a 100% completion anyway. Yeah, I always really am happy when I see people responding to my videos because 
you know, I'm a, I'm a channel that has like less than 2,000 subscribers, so I don't really get a lot of uh, feedback from people, and the time that I do, um, it's always really nice and appreciative. I, I always really do appreciate whenever somebody gives me a comment. That really does mean a lot to me. Okay, we're back in the sunken ship area, which means that we're over around Criteria. I definitely want to get over to Norfair so that we can be able to take down Redley. ship. I didn't want to be around here. But I don't have a choice. I do have to go through the wreck ship. Oh well. That's the way it is, I suppose. A huge fan of the animation slash video game community. It's so refreshing to see your videos. You're one of my favorite reviewers. I plan to make you my own sometime. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Codebox42. Really do appreciate it. I mean, to be quite honest, I mean, you know, um, I don't really know how I rank amongst the other videos, per se. I mean, maybe by subscribers, I'm pretty much, like, non-existent. But fans like yourself and... Um, all the other people that I seem to get responses from, that that, uh, that really means a lot to me, so. You know, I guess in number, it doesn't, I mean, you know, maybe I'm non-existent, but for the occasional comments that I do get, it, it really means a lot to me. Uh, let's see, top 10 video on top 10 Nickelodeon siblings. Hmm. Um, that'd be kind of interesting. Maybe if I do it, like, on a National Siblings Day? Maybe? I mean, I'll definitely have to- I'll def- But right now, I just have a lot of, like, um, ideas for various projects, so... I don't know if I'm gonna be able to tackle that, like, all right away. I mean, I don't want to be, like, Watch Mojo, in which I just cover so much top 10 discussions, so... Yeah, I, I mean, I definitely want to, like, sparse them out. Like, every couple of months, I would do, like, a top 10 list or something. Yeah, I don't want to go too overboard, otherwise people will get so much tired. Uh, let's see. I got one for Father's Day. Top 10 best dads for Nicktoons. Oh. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd be cool. I really would, um, yeah, that would be a really interesting list again, but I don't want to go too overboard, of course. Uh, one thing I don't like in sibling-based shows is that every sibling gang up on one sibling and you feel so bad about that one sibling, especially if they are a nice person. Yeah, I, I think that, you know, sometimes they do go a little bit too overboard about that, you know, when discussing about, like, oh, you know, you want to make it relatable so much so that you want to have dynamics with the siblings, and that can sometimes get a little overboard. That is true, absolutely. But, yeah, in the case in which you have the siblings, you, you want to make it relatable, but at the same time, you don't want to go too much in the sense in which, oh, it's just going to be focusing on this, so... Yeah, that's a really, really fine line. I definitely do agree about that. Hey, Slade, how's it going? Nice to see that you're here. Uh, welcome to the chat. Yeah, we're actually getting some more people in, but I guess, you know, it makes a lot of sense because early in the morning, there were only a handful of people, but now we do have a lot more, so that's fantastic. So, yeah, thank you for joining. So yeah, if, if, like I said, if you guys have any other questions or comments, then please let me know throughout the chat.
All right, so now that we're in the Criteria area, I, w I definitely want to head over to Norfair. That way we can actually start beating the game, because I only have to fight Ridley and then just fight Mother Brain and that'll be it. Yeah, don't worry, Nasaya. I, I just put that person in timeout. If they do act disrespectful again like that, I'll definitely block them. Trust me, I do not like to respond to comments that are really negative. That's not very appropriate. I can assure you on that. Alright, so you guys have any- uh, anyway, so I actually do have some cool updates to share with you guys. So, right now, um, we're in the process of doing Season 2 of War In Between, and I do have a couple of special guests that I have lined up. Uh, I'm really excited about it because, um, we have, uh, uh we just inter- we just got the, um, uh, we got a hold of Eric Casimiro from, uh, you know, who was one of the writers of His Told by Ginger, and the response to that, with all the questions, were really overwhelming, and I cannot be any more appreciative on that. And uh, I'll just let you know in a hint that we do actually do have another person who worked on His Told by Ginger that we're going to get for the podcast, and we're really excited about that as well. Yeah, again, I can't say who it is, but trust me, um, when the time comes, you'll definitely know. Okay, Summer Love, uh, uh, Arnold Valentine, uh, School Play, um, Hug on the Couch, Headless Cabby, Grudge Match, Woods Opera, Arnold, Ghost Bride, and Arnold's Christmas. Oh, great choices. Absolutely, good choices. Uh, I'm not gonna say what the comment is, Codebox42, because... If I mention it, then, you know, that's just gonna bring up more of the negativity, so I'm just gonna leave it that it was not very nice. And that's why I had to put the person on timeout. Uh, nice to know what would have been interesting if you got a hold of the actress who played as the transvestite in the wedding frame. I... I don't know if we can... I, I, maybe we will, who knows, but we'll just have to see. As of right now, I don't- I haven't gotten a hold of any other voice actors as of yet. We just got a hold of people who were, like, working behind the scenes. As of, like, voice actors, not just yet. But again, we'll- we'll, we'll keep you updated. If Ren and Simbi spinoffs come off, spun off more Ren and Simbi spinoff, like... Lions. Uh, I'm sorry, Slate, I, I'm not really understanding what you're referring to. Let's see, do the Powerpuff Girls remind you a bit of the other triplets from other shows? Uh, which triplets are you referring to? Uh, uh, please let me know about that. Um, I'm not sure which triplets you're referring to. see. Are there any plans on more interviews with voice actors? Not yet. Not as of yet. So yeah, uh, no no plans for like various people like Liz George or um, Melissa Disney or anything like that. No plans yet. Uh, the, the people that we did get so far are like more behind the scenes kind of people, so um, yeah, nothing yet. But again, we'll keep you posted. Like I said, if we if there are any special guests like that, you will be the first to know. Uh, 
if I'm, am I going to see the new Ren and Stimpy short that came out? Um, if it does come out, I'm, I'm willing to see it, sure. Do you listen to the Big Orange Couch podcast? Um, I have listened to one episode, and uh, yeah, I, I like where they're going with their stuff. Hopefully, maybe someday I can even get them as guests on a podcast or something. That'll be a lot of fun. But yeah, I like what they're doing. I wish them the best of luck. Okay, we're back in Norfair. Now I can finally find Ridley. Uh, yeah, I, I've only listened to, like, one episode, but from the sounds of how they're doing it so far with the Big Orange um, Couch podcast, uh, I like what they're doing so far, so I'm really interested in finding out what other stuff they want to cover. I gave you another chance, but you just seem to continue um, spouting a whole bunch of uh, nasty comments, so I'm gonna have to block you. So, I'm very sorry. I'm back over here. Now let me see if I can go to uh, where I'm supposed to go to with Ridley. Then afterwards I can be able to finish off the game. What other animation reviewers have I seen? Uh, a lot of my colleagues, obviously, um, I, I've, I've mentioned this before in another live stream chat, but yeah, a lot of the colleagues from Manic Expression that I've known for many, many years, I have seen a lot of their work. Um, but if you're talking about, like, people that I don't know who are not my colleagues, um, let's see. Um, I mean, I, maybe I'm not, like, associated with them, but my colleagues are associated with them. Like, I have seen a handful of episodes of um, Animat Reviews because my friend Hymitude, uh, from, uh, who was uh, associated with um, Mr. Coates, uh, he's still associated with them. But, yeah, he's also um, friends with them as well, and um, let's see who else... There we go. I mean, I have seen a handful of episodes of Rebel Taxi stuff because there have been a few people who have been sharing me some stuff that they that he's talked about that they really do like. And um, I think the first one that I ever did see was um, uh, his rant about like nostalgia and about how '90s shows were not always the best, you know, I mean, you know, sure, a lot of people say that 90s cartoons were the best, but then he was talking about, like, oh, some of them can be really weird, and that, you know, the, the modern cartoons do not deserve to be as hated as, you know, a lot of the f internet seems to claim it is, so. Yeah, that was the first one that I ever saw, and then afterwards, I saw, like, his, um, top ten rejected pilots, animation pilots, and that's how, um, uh, you know, I, that's when he discussed about, like, the modifiers and constant pain, and so that was actually really cool. And, uh, let's see what else. Um, a Jamboreeki as well, because he was associated with Y-Boy, and they've done a lot of crossovers together. And because he's been in a few episodes of the Arumeha show, we've actually started to got- we, um, I actually started to get to know him a little bit more.
Hello from Colombia. I love Super Metroid Saga now playing Super Metroid on SNES. Hello from Colombia. Nice to f nice to know that we have an international following. Awesome. I think I'm gonna probably save right now and then afterwards I'm gonna call it because it's already getting late over here. It's already three o'clock and I have some other things to do. So I'm gonna save it right here and then afterwards I'm gonna call it. There we go. So yeah, I definitely wanna save this as well. There we go. So yeah, I think um, I think I'm gonna wrap it up. So guys, thank you so much for joining on the live stream. And if you guys have any other questions or concerns, you can follow me on my social media pages. But yeah, I think that's it. Um, hope to see you around soon, and thanks for watching.